Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Tibet Vow Summit 2019. It's, I'm very pleasure to hear to introduce you into, uh, our this year's seasons. And uh, this is the first time we change our this uh, the, this meeting from the uh, winter time to the summer time. So the last time will be the the, the, the summer time. So uh, in today. We will uh, spend, spend our meeting from one day to three days course due to too many of our things to discuss with uh, many audience and uh, experts. And uh, we also will have uh, two uh, great interview with two uh, of the professional, uh, Dr. Alan Gribier and uh, Dr. Jian Ye, uh, as this field expert, tomorrow morning. So uh, remember to be here, and we will have a great interview with the two experts. And as before, we also provide a webcast uh, from the website. You can see the meeting three in three days if you are not available in the last two days. And today, we will have a live uh, two cases and three video cases to share to discuss with uh, about things. So uh, enjoy our meeting. The first of all, we would like to uh, invite our Dean of General Zhenxing General Hospital, Professor uh, Professor Chen Wei and later we are Professor Ye Jun to give us a welcome speech. Professor Wei, please. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Uh, well, uh, dear doc, uh, Dr. Ye Jian uh, from Canada and our distinguished, distinguished guests our, uh, and ladies and gentlemen. Well, um, it's a great honor to hold this meeting, and it's been several years uh, uh, after our first uh, uh, meeting, and uh, this time we will have um, a little bit more time and more uh, lectures, so we have uh, expanded our time uh, for one more day. And uh, I'm so delighted uh, to welcome all of you who are able to come to change in general hospital to share your experience and with uh, each other uh, I especially thank the overseas experts from uh, many countries and we, we are willing to spare uh, especially for thank for thank thank the overseas uh, speakers to sp share spare their time to attend this meeting in their very busy schedule uh, in this meeting, um, the experts are going to share their expertise in the most uh, modern and advanced treatment uh, modalities in the valve diseases, the various kinds of uh, valve diseases. And uh, uh, we will have uh, five uh, live, live demonstrations, three from our hospital and two from China, one from Anzhen Hospital in Beijing and the one from uh, uh, second uh, fitted hospital of uh, Zhejiang University. I'm so glad that uh, yeah, we can gather together. And uh, uh, I also uh, uh, welcome everybody to uh, to join this uh, meeting in Taipei. And I especially uh, wish to express my gratitude to you. And uh, I hope you have a uh, very good time in Taipei. And at the same time, I'd like to thank our uh, team workers at, at from Jenshin General Hospital to uh, organize this meeting. And uh, thank you. The second, we would like to invite uh, uh, Professor uh, Jen Wei, Wei Jian to give us a welcome speech. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm not supposed to give any any words here because I suppose I could come here early in the morning today, but my flight is canceled, so I arrived yesterday. So just told me, ask me to say some words. So uh, it is my honor to, to be here and uh, involved in this uh, very unique summit, Valve uh, Summit, and since uh, since uh, first meeting as a call director with Dr. Wei, um, it's really my honor. I'm so happy to be here again and see 
all my old friends and new friends. I think we, we saw the new face. Uh, I saw a new face at you know, this meeting. As you, you, you see here, the meeting is uh, also growing, growing and uh, with more like a you know, live case and uh, lectures, contact. Because uh, I think, uh, you know, over the past uh, 10 years, I think the TAV is more in the West country. But I think in the next 20, 10, 15 years, I think it will be the, in Asia. I think the, the, the growth in Asia will be, will be uh, so fast and dramatic, particularly as I think the, the reimbursement will, you know, uh, come in factor. I think this will, will be a huge growth uh, in TAV in Asia. Uh, Pacific, and also I think uh, will be uh, quite a uh, different uh, in uh, in terms of population patient uh, in Asia compared to the Western uh, country. In the in the Asia country, I think uh, the the valve disease is slightly different different compared to to the aortic stenosis in the North uh, North America or, or Europe. Because here, I think the underlying rheumatic valve disease also is a, is a major component in the aortic stenosis with either rheumatic or mixed. So I think uh, the uh, from uh, you know, in this point of view, I think the technique for the TAVI probably is a little more challenging uh, compared to the pure aortic stenosis because of rheumatic disease. So I think uh, will be really interesting, you know, attending Asia meeting because uh, it's a different population and there's a huge growth in the next, uh, I think, uh, ten years. So I really uh, looking forward to to see this. Uh, this is a uh, uh, very unique. Uh, uh, opportunity for us to learn, actually. Uh, particularly, I'm from, uh, from uh, North America. I think I will learn from uh, everybody, uh, you know, in terms of TAVI and all other trans So, uh, uh, my final words, uh, welcome uh, everybody uh, be here and uh, share the, your knowledge. And, uh, and uh, this meeting is really uh, give us very unique opportunity uh, for learning each other and uh, communication and the friendship. Uh, so I think a friendship and the network is really important for, for, the, for, the, for the, our communi community. So uh, this is, a, is one of the best uh, you know, opportunity meeting uh, for this purpose. So thanks, welcome. Thanks for praise the year. And then we will be, uh, be begin our today's activity. So I would like to invite uh, the first uh, season's moderators to go upstairs. The Professor uh, Zheng Wei, Professor Meng Xu, and uh, Zhang Zhongyi, Chiu Guanming, Hou Xiaomin, and uh, Zhang Haipo. Please. So the first topic will be uh, uh, given by Dr. Meng Xi. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Meng Xi a little bit uh, in a brief uh, introduction. And uh, I think most of you already know Dr. Meng Xi uh, for a long time. Uh, he looks very young uh, and also very energetic, but actually he is uh, a little bit senior <laughs> in the field of cardiac surgery in China. Actually, he has been working in the field of cardiovascular surgery for 20 years. He is uh, now the uh, associate director of uh, Anzhen Hospital. Uh, I'm the, the, uh, the director of uh, cardiovascular surgery in Anzhen Hospital. Uh, he uh, actually, he is especially um, uh, specialized in the valve surgery including the repair of a rheumatic heart disease, and also he's also an uh, expert in heart transplantation, atrial fibrillation, ablation, uh, etc. cetera. Um, he had uh, published many uh, uh, scientific papers. Also, uh, he had invented a, a 
uh, so called uh, mitral buffering, uh, 3D mitral buffering, in, in the year 2013. And uh, I think it's uh, uh, almost one of the, the top uh, valve surgeon in, uh, in, in China and also uh, in uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, I think. And his uh, uh, patient's number. He got a lot of uh, patient's numbers, and uh, his ex experience should be very valuable. So uh, let's uh, welcome Dr. Men Xu. Thank you. So, wait, the, so this is my uh, first time joining this uh, a warm summit. Uh, my first the impression is that it's it's very good meeting, and uh, I can meet the uh, all of you, the, the old and the new friends. So I think I can have the uh, good chance to to learn the many many things from this meeting. So uh, this morning I I I offered the, my lecture is the, about the in rheumatic valve repair. So I don't know uh, in Taiwan, maybe uh, a, few a, few, a few rheumatic patients you can meet, but in China uh, right now, so this paper show that the, at least the 7 million the cases in, in China, uh, rheumatic, uh, rheumatic valve disease in China. So right, uh, I can show you this case. This is the, the female. The 40, uh, 43 years old and uh, rheumatic uh, uh, severe uh, stenosis and um, uh, moderate regurgitation. So this is the echo. Echo show that the uh, valve repair, uh, area about the one uh, cm square and regurgitation uh, 7 c, uh, cm square and uh, uh, left ventricle side uh, uh, 57. So for this case, the problem is the rheumatic valve, uh, mitral valve uh, disease, we should uh, repair or replacement. But uh, most of surgeons say they, they think so. Rheumatic mitral valve damage the all of the mitral de uh, device. So how to repair is very big problem. Uh, right now there's uh, no standard procedure that is easy to be repeated by the most of the surgeon. So I think this is the character of the pathological uh, evolution. You can see the for the rheumatic valve disease the near the 100% the proportion is commercial fusion. And the second is the valvular age thickening. But both of these, I don't think that they can cause the, uh, the mitral cooperation failed. So we, we think generally abnormal ability of the rheumatic mitral valve results from the fused, the stiff and the thickened commercial area. So we think essential condition of the rheumatic mitral valve repair, the first thing that the anterior valve area and the normal mobility is sufficient for the, uh, for the operation. The second, there's the no severe calcification on subvalvular apparatus. So if the, the case no more than the pathological type three is the good candidate according above. So I think we can, maybe we can set up the, the rheumatic uh, mitral valve repair procedure. We call that the, the commercial plastic standard uh, four steps. That's the four steps. The first step is the uh, decalcing of the commercial is addressed to recover the mobility and the flexibility of the commercial area.
uh, if we we can uh, uh, decouse uh, the commercial a uh, commercial uh, decalcification, uh, uh, we can to recover the mobility of the fuse of the stiff commercial uh, anterior and, and posterior of the lifted age, uh, uh, lifted age. So the second uh, step is the only the check. The check this the, means the detect the exact the natural shape of the commercial border and the make sure the cooperation end point between the anterior and the posterior leaflets. Uh, this, uh, I, I think the, <clears throat> there's the, uh, for the, uh, uh, the, the for, for this checking, we, we should uh, identify the, where is the commercial leaflets. So we think the, for the commercial leaflets, there's a no cooperation function. So if we damage the uh, commercial leaflets, maybe cause the, uh, the regurgitation. The third step, that's the commercial, uh, commercial octomy. So for the, uh, uh, when when we do the uh, commercial octomy, we have to uh, uh, to we 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 can we can do the we, we couldn't uh, uh, injure the uh, uh, commercial leaflets in the cooperation. The fourth step that's the to do the uh, if the 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 cord is very short, so we have to do the hemorrhoid muscle splitting, and. That's the fourth step. So let's return to the case in the uh, for. So that's the case. We uh, firstly we we can see there's the. Uh, 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 using the nerve hole through the inter, uh, the groove incision during surgery, and uh, we can do the make suture to do the good the explosion. Yeah, so commissioner should be uh, uh, in the plan for the next operation. Then we do the so that's the first step. We have to do the uh, decalcing of the uh, commercial area. And then there's the uh, Second step, we do the only the check the commercial area. Where is the the uh, commercial the, the border and uh, when uh, uh, where's the end uh, end point for the cut? Then that's the third steps. Then do the commercial rotomy, commercial rotomy. And uh, that's the four steps that do the papillary muscle split, uh, splitting. Then that's the finish the uh, uh, anterior commercial procedure. Then uh, for the posterior uh, commercial, that's the same procedure steps. You can see the posterior commercial. 
then the first thing that's the same procedure we we do the decalcy of the uh, commercial area then do the uh, commercial rectomy Okay, then the we then we do the uh, water test. Measure the size of the ring. Uh, the, this one may be the oh that's a thirty two. For the uh, Edwards uh, products, the uh, Fizzo two artificial ring. Then. Finally, the the water test, the metro wall uh, recovered the smell sharp. Good, no regurgitation, and uh, have the big the metro uh, area. Then this the 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 echo post uh, po uh, post over echography. The we can see the metro area. We can more than the the to the CM, the Edward Way, about the one, uh, 150. And the regurgitation very, very, very little. Then this, the, uh, before the uh, checkout, the patient that's echo, show the metro area, uh, 2.3 CM, and the, uh, no regurgitation. So the four steps concluded. The proportion of the patient with the uh, pathological three or below is above the 50 in China. For the most of the cases, the anterior valve area is sufficient and the no significant uh, contraction. Uh, thick and uh, valveless free, uh, free age and the shortened course do not affect the cooperation and the no need for the deal waste. Yeah. The, the main reason of the MR after rheumatic repair is the commercial leaflet damage. Uh, the commercial, uh, commercial plastic procedure for steps is a simply procedure. It's the sliding and the edge to edge, which is uh, uh, easy to be uh, uh, copied by the surgeons. So this is some of the uh, clinical results. So the, for the, uh, before the, we, uh, we do the four steps, so that's the group A patient, and the group B, that's the, uh, we do the metro, uh, rheumatic valve repair according to the four steps. We can see that for the uh, metro valve area, the group A, uh, generally uh, the post-operation uh, uh, metro, uh, uh, a metro uh, area about the one uh, to two point one, and uh, and for the group B we can get the more uh, metro valve area, especially for the regurgitation. So the group A uh, maybe maybe there's some uh, uh, some the stenosis or regurgitation, but we if, uh, when we for the group B, then it's the after uh, according the the, the the four steps the procedure we can uh, we can decrease the the regurgitation rate. So I think the uh, according our uh, uh, practice in China, uh, especially in my world, now last year we can finish about uh, more than the four hundred. Uh, Cases of mitral valve repair. Uh, and right now, the, for the rheumatic uh, valve repair, we can get the, about the 70%. So I think the repair is very important for the patient. So I think the, I like the, the uh, this year's, uh, the David Adams, the, the lecture. The progress is uh, fueled by the, the sex, uh, uh, this, Certification in uh, inpatient and aversion. 
So I think I want to change some uh, some words. I think the the progress of the mitral valve repair techniques is fueled by the desexification of the current situation of mitral valve replacement, especially in China. So uh, salvation uh, of the guilty scene after rheumatic mitral valve replacement surgery and the version for the learning of the mitral valve repair technique. So thank you. Thank you very much. OK, thank you, Dr. Manxi. Uh, for your excellent uh, presentations, especially in the uh, surgical techniques. And I think many of uh, us are willing to know some more detail about your techniques. And uh, But before this, uh, uh, I want to um, uh, introduce our co-chairmen over here, sitting here. And Dr. Uh, Chiu Guanmin is the, the associate superintendent of Far Eastern Hospital. Uh, he's also a cardiac surgeon, and Dr. Ho, uh, Ho, uh, uh, Ho, uh, Ho is, Dr. Ho is the, uh, now uh, the uh, um, uh, director of the heart center of Cathy Hospital down in Taipei, okay. And uh, Dr. Ye, I, I don't have to introduce you again, okay. So, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Zhang Haipo uh, is also a very, very well known that uh, cardiac surgeon in China, and he's also working at uh, Anden Hospital. And uh, okay, just uh, under Dr. Manshi before, right? No, see her, right? Under you, okay. Okay, so doc, Dr. Zhang Haipo is also a very uh, well-known cardiac surgeon in, in China. So uh, I, I'd, like, I'd like to ask uh, our co-chairman or the uh, our uh, yeah, guest, uh, if there is any question about uh, Dr. Meng Shi's uh, presentation. Okay, Dr. Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate uh, Dr. Meng's contribution. Uh, indeed, uh, rheumatic mitral valve repair is not easy, and it needs a lot of experience in Taiwan, uh, probably because of the progress of public health. So now we have uh, less and less uh, new pneumatic mitral stenosis cases for all of the cardiac surgeons. So we already passed that surge. Uh, I, I do learn a lot pneumatic mitral valve repair from uh, including China and also the uh, the, the like uh, Thailand, Vietnam. Uh, I actually appreciate your work, especially you summarize all the experience from uh, from your practice to those uh, simple four step. Just try to uh, uh, try to uh, enhance the practice for the uh, future participant. I I, I do have a. Quite simple question. Uh, from your technique, you start from the uh, annular suture first. Same with the uh, Alain Carpentier technique. So uh, do you have any trouble if we fail the repair? If we fail the repair, so we will- For the rheumatic? Yeah, for this kind. So what will you suggest, especially for those, for those beginner, they start to learn? They try to duplicate your technique. You start the mitral annual repair, and they fail to achieve the competent result, the good result. And then they have to take down everything and do the mitral valve replacement. Do you have any suggestion for them? Yeah, no, right now, the, uh, we listen, the, maybe the less than the 5%. Yeah. Most the, the more than the, the maybe nearly 100%. So uh, for the, I, I think the for, uh, in my world, for the young surgeon, maybe they like to do the rheumatic valve, valve repair, then the, 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 the general the MR. Because the, for the rheumatic repair, we only according that to the four step. So you don't worry about maybe for the patient, the first thing we, we use the artificial ring, then there's a field we have to uh, do the replacement 
So maybe the patient have the uh, double pay for the ring and the, and the artificial uh, wall. So uh, I think the more than the, at least the more than the 50 percent uh, of the United patient in China, the uh, only only to do the commercial plastic according to this first step, then the artificial ring. I think we, we still have the, some chance to learn the rheumatic or, or to practice this kind of uh, surgery in Taiwan because we have a pretty good national health insurance. So most of the patients we have, uh, they, they probably tend to visit the hospital, tend to have a medical attention beforehand, before they have a severe mitral stenosis. So from your experience, in case for those patients with uh, good AMLO service plus AMLO motility. The rates of the the rates of the consideration like a, like a PMLO condition is not your concern. Your concern would be the AMLO yeah. service, right? Yeah. Anterior uh, mitral service. Yeah, I think the uh, the first thing that's the uh, according to the anterior leaflet uh, the uh, pathology. Uh, says uh, that's my experience. If the when, when you do the uh, echo. So the, the thinking uh, thinking area more than the, uh, less than the, the one third area that's okay for, for this patient. So that's the, uh, the, the good candidate for the reform. Don't uh, uh, don't worry about the how thinking about post or how uh, how the, how uh, how size the area. Maybe Do you the less the, the, the one cm? That's okay. Do you do the peeling technique for PML? So I don't think so. If the for the maybe the uh, pathologic the more than the, the, the maybe the four the pathologic types, so the the thinking the area more than the one third area for the anterior leaflet, maybe you have to the later. So less than that, you you shouldn't need to do the any. Thank you. You have any comment, Dr. Ye? I, I personally have a, a, little, a minimum experience of rheumatic valve repair, only for young patient, but uh, you know, the Dr. Moon's developed four steps. So I just, for the learning purpose, uh, what kind of patient are you really not suitable for, for the four steps, so just for, for, for other people understanding what they feel like, for, for example, have a severe regurgitation combined with a not stenosis or the calcified posterior leaflet. What kind of patient is not suitable for, for the use so of four steps technique? Maybe for the, uh, for the most of surgery, I think uh, the generally the more than the patholo uh, pathology types, the more than the four. That's four, maybe that's a difficult to do the repair for the surgeon. The, uh, in, my, in my world, we have the maybe uh, two or three uh, surgeons they can do the uh, rheumatic uh, care. So generally, the least than the three problem. But uh, maybe some uh, patient uh, generally that that's guidelines the age the more than that the sixty five old. So that's the long term. Uh, They, they will do the replacement. But uh, generally, I can do some, maybe the spend more time, I can, I can do the repair. That depend upon the, uh, we, it, when, when we do the operation, you, no damage for the anterior leaflet, that's okay. Fine, a simple question. So if, uh, if uh, we, we usually see the commercial is extremely calcified, you, you decalcify, basically commercial is gone. Yeah. So you mentioned that most of the regurgitation is from the damage of the common shore. So, but I, I think most of the uh, rheumatic common shore I find is extremely calcified. As there's no any normal tissue left. Even you peel off the calcium, basically everything is gone. So in this kind of situation, what you do for, for, for the common shore? If you completely resect it and then and there's no leaflets there, so what do you do? You, you put a patch or you just suture close? Generally, uh, if one do, 
uh, there are some, uh, maybe the uh, uh, anterior posterior commissure, there are some, that, uh, maybe the big, big calcification. So the first thing, maybe the, before the operation, I have no, no the, the enough uh, confidence to do repair. But uh, during the operation, when, when we successfully do the calcification and the no damage for the anterior leaflets, so that's okay. So maybe uh, some uh, damage for the posterior leaflets, we can do some, uh, 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 some method to do some uh, small uh, repair, that's okay. So I think the first thing that's the, for the for successful repair, the first thing that's the uh, intact and uh, no damage for the anterior leaflets, that's okay. Well, uh, I think the preserved valve is the golden standard for the valve surgery. So uh, I think uh, most uh, cardiac surgeons are eager to do the repair for uh, any uh, mitral valve diseases, but uh, some, uh, uh, well, in the early years, people are not so confident in the repair of the rheumatic heart disease because of the uh, um, shrinkage or some uh, calcifications over the valve. But now, uh, uh, this is current trend, I think, in the future to repair the, the mitral valve uh, in your way, I think, in your way. So uh, the uh, your experience is quite... Uh, uh, quite important for us. So, uh, uh, well, I, I think since you have a very uh, high successful rate, I think uh, uh, people are trying to to begin this kind of uh, surgery, but at the beginning, uh, people, even you're eager to do this, but uh, uh, people maybe are not so confident. So, but I think it's a, uh, mm, not um, a big issue because uh, you can try to do it, but and when you uh, tested it, if it's not successful, then you can just replace it. So uh, this is, I think, it's a most cardiac surgeons should have to uh, attempt to do this. Yeah. To do this, I think this is what Dr. Manish is. Uh, your is that your comment, and is that is, is that true for your comment? You want to comment on this? No, no, I, I don't think so. That that's the for the all of the rheumatic valve repair, we should do, do the repair. And that's the I, I think that's according the the patients the, the the condition and the pathology to the tabs. So right now that uh, I do some research in, in China. So for the uh, for the less than the uh, pathologic tab the uh, three. That's occupied maybe the, about the seventy percent. So I think the, in China we can do the maybe the first first that we can do the about the thirty percent the, the rheumatic repair. We can choose the type one or type two patient and do the, some the training or for, uh, special for the young surgeon. We can do the, the good good uh, the, the good uh, beginning uh, steps. Then we can spread to the. Uh, type two and uh, type three, then maybe we can get the fifty percent. That's not. I think the I have the confidence to do that's the uh, training. Yeah, so we can do the step by step. Maybe we can good good future. So right now, I uh, this year I, I have the, the the plan in China. We we I I want to do the at least the twelve the biggest the uh, medical center to do some uh, training. So I have the uh, I need an, uh, any the reward. That's the only the you can choose the one or two the rheumatic uh, cases. I can show you the how to do that. So I have the confidence to do this. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. And uh, if there is any uh, comment or questions from the floor or from our chairman, like the help. Oh, uh, hello everybody. Uh, uh, Dr. Mong, this, uh, I knew him since uh, 1997. Uh, I have a wonderful experience in Beijing for eight months. And uh, I remember at that time, the Dr. Mong teach a lot uh, skill at the uh, valve, the replacement and the repair. So now today, the, you showed us a wonderful technique to do the rheumatic repair. That's uh, difficult. And I have a question that to my knowledge is that 
Uh, the rheumatic heart is kind of the infection and uh, chronic inflammation. Sometimes it uh, demonstrates the three typical pathology at the leaflet and the subvalvular apparatus. So if you uh, peer the leaflet and uh, to split the fuse, fuse the papillary muscle or the code, but uh, how about the long term result? Because maybe. I'm not sure, but maybe the chronic inflammation still progress, and maybe take 10 years or eight years and the fuse again. Did it happen? Mm -hmm. Or in your experience, is that uh, what happened? Yeah. Do you have any experience with some of this? Yeah, that, your question, that's the, that's, I think that's the most of surgeon's question. That's, uh, yes, maybe the most of the, 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 the cardiologist and the surgeon's question. So I think the, for the rheumatic uh, uh, valve disease, the first thing that's that maybe the uh, rheumatic uh, disease can influence the long-term results. But right now, in China, about the more than the 30 years old, no patient have the active the rheumatic. Right? So I don't think so that the rheumatic the, is the uh, influence for the long-term results, that first thing. So for the uh, redo the rheumatic repair. So what's the main reason for, for the, 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 the valve uh, fuse the again and something? I think that's the, that's the, uh, I kind of, I kind of, I don't know what's up. Oh, yes, and hemodynamic factors. It's, it's a very important thing. So if we, after repair, we have the no regurgitation and the no no uh, uh, severe uh, stenosis. So generally, for for this group, we we can get about the uh, uh, near the five years. So generally, the the PA uh, PG about the five five uh, mm Hg. So I think that's long term is enough. So if the the patient redo, I think the more than the 70% that's caused by the surgeon's technique. Yeah, we, we couldn't uh, 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 release the stenosis and have the, uh, make the patient uh, the, some uh, regurgitation. So for the long term, it's not good enough, I think. Well, I think maybe uh, 10 years is quite uh, worthwhile. Even you can maintain for 10 years, last for 10 years. Uh, it's worthwhile, you know, in comparison with the uh, well, so, uh, replacement, right? So, okay. So, and well, I, uh, any other question? Dr. Lee. Thank you, Professor Mo. Uh, um, it's about the uh, annuloplasty with rain. Is it a necessary uh, step uh, from the uh, technique? I, I mean, if the patient's annulus, you test it, the competence is quite well. Uh, is the Rain annuloplasty is necessary for you, for this step, this question. Yeah, so uh, annuloplasty, uh, we uh, use the artificial ring, special for the uh, rheumatic valve repair, is the big, uh, there's the debate question. I think that maybe the reason the AATS and some uh, big meeting that's, we do some of the research in our world. We we do some of the, uh, use the echo to, to compare the degenerated MR and the rheumatic the disease, the annular, uh, uh, annular abnormal, uh, or, or normal types. But for, for the rheumatic the, the disease, they can, uh, uh, so maybe uh, th there are some the little uh, 3D uh, shadow, but it's not in the normal shadow. That's the first one. The another is the uh, is the uh, is not the uh, I don't know. To, yeah, irregular the uh, the the shape uh, for the rheumatic. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I think that we use the for for our group patient uh, uh, near the one hundred percent we use the. Artificial ring, yes. I think that's the necessary for the repair. 
I, I think the, well, your topic is very hot, you know. Many surgeons would like to ask you many questions. Even I have some questions for you afterwards because, uh, well, you, you, you stay here, so you still have some other questions, especially uh, the technical questions. Well, I think uh, we would like to also, you know, to follow you, you know, follow your further experience and uh, uh, in the future, uh, I, I think people would like to uh, know uh, your uh, your technique. Uh, even in the future, probably you will Im uh, have some uh, improvement in your technique, and that uh, people would like to follow you. Okay, some okay. So this is uh, uh, what I'm thinking. You know, you will be uh, the uh, the leader uh, in the future to teach us how to do the. Uh, repair for the rheumatic heart disease. So, okay, so thank you so much. And uh, uh, the, the, the next topic will... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we, we have to move to the operating room. Uh, there is a live uh, uh, open surgery by Dr. Chen Yichen. And uh, our echo man is Dr. Xiao Minsen. And yeah, now uh, who is going to chair this, or we 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 chair this, right? Dr. Chen now you are on the, the uh, on the screen. Yeah. You want to say something about this case? Hello, good morning, everybody. Did you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Okay, I'm Dr. Chen from Zhengxin Hospital. Good morning, everybody. And today I will perform a micro valve repair of the mitral valve regurgitation. Today with me is Dr. Lin. He will be the first assistant. And uh, Ms. Wu. Our professionist will be Ms. Liu and uh, Mr. Yang. And the echo cardiography will be Dr. Xiong. And now Dr. Lin will pr present the case. Good morning, everyone. We're going to perform our uh, mitral valve replace, uh, repair today. Next slide. First of all, we'd like to review the general history of this patient. Mrs. Wong is a 50 years old female, and she denied having any systemic disease that like uh, hypertension, diabetes, or liver or renal dysfunction before. But she had the history of hyperthyroidism and underwent search, uh, surgical before. Uh, this time she had progressive shorten shortness of breath for several months. And this, and until this June, he, she had an episode of acute pulmonary edema where the local hospital suggests uh, suggest the diagnosis of, of uh, of coin and uh, disease, and she had underwent uh, coin angiography, so no more, no more angiography. But the echocardiogram shows uh, some some abnormality, and she was transferred to our hospital. And our echocardiography showed the ear function was well. The LVEF and RVEF were preserved, but with LA uh, LA size enlargement. We also show she has severe mitral valve regurgitation. That's why she's here. And next slide, please. Hmm. And this is the transthoracic echocardiography. We can uh, we can see from here. There's a there's a picture of the mitral valve regurgitation. Next slide, please. If we see closer, we can see there was an an eccentric jet from the mitral valve. It seems like to for, uh, project from the anterior to posterior leaflet. Next slide. And for the full chamber view, it's very clear. The jet was from the anterior to posterior. And we can see the, the, the mitral valve has some thickening. Next slide, please. And the the running the uh, the running echocardiography we can see the display has slightly uh, thickening and we we can see maybe uh coda coda rupture with an eccentric jet from the anterior to posterior. Next slide. And yeah. for the uh, short axis view, we can see the jet was mainly from the knee.
medial lesion, which means uh, that will be the maybe the A3 or P3 area. Next slide. And the uh, ear function, ejection function was re preserved. Next slide. So according to the HA and ACC guideline, this is an uh, 51 years old female with severe mitral valve regurgitation and preserved LV function. That's that's an uh, that's an test-wise indication for mitral surgery. Next slide. So our tentative plan is an artificial coda to anterior anterior leaflet and possible of closure to the medial commissure because it may be it may have an involvement with that area. That's our, our planning before the operation. Okay. Okay. This was our original plan to do an anterior coda uh, reconstruction. However, the patient comes into the OR, the echocardiac graph did a uh, esophageal echo and tell us a different story. Uh, Dr. Xiong, tell us what the new fun finding. Okay, um, good morning, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Now uh, I'm going to present the uh, transesophageal echo. I just record a little bit earlier this morning. Okay. So this is a portion of view. As you can see, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, all contractions are pretty good. You can see a little bit thick in the mitral valve, anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet. And also you can see something flying here. So maybe this is the core you can see from the portion of view. Now let's go to the next slide. If we're using the X-plane, now you can appreciate now the GF goes a little bit different now compared to the transthoracic. So I think the transthoracic, with the echo, I have to admit it, probably didn't do a very thorough examination to see which leaflet is a prolapse or flare. As you can see from uh, from this two camera view, this is the level two appendage, the P1, <coughs> P2, the P3. So the, this is the, the jet came from the P3. So this is the from the X-plan. Now let's go to another view. Take a, take a little look. Now let's look this uh, shortest view from uh, uh, I making fun of it. The two camera view, let this left and two panage. As you can see, this is the P1, HDP3 from the two uh, from the 2D. You can see the jet, the acceleration uh, jet, is go all the way through, go through to the left atrial appendage. So it's a nice looking uh, microvegetation jet. It's very severe. So that's why he needs she needs a surgery. Now let's go look the 3D now. I should show you one, the 3D. It's, it's an earthquake view, very nice lake. Stay alpha, now I put it at 12 o'clock, my surgical view is right here. And two leaflet and posterior leaflet right here. Uh, now you can see the prolapse or flail of the, of the mitral valve. It's a, uh, it's a nice, the P3. And the, the cord is up to the P3, exactly. So the T really changed the diagnosis from transthoracic. So next time we should do a little more thorough transthoracic examination. Now let's show you a little color with the 3D. Uh, hold on, let me find it. So this is the jet you can see from the uh, M face view. This is the P3. Full expiration is right here. All the P3 jet direct towards off the side. This is the altar right here. And then the last way I'm going to show you from trans uh, gastric. This very nice uh, color Doppler show. This is the, the anterior. This is the posterior. Posterior jet directly toward the, the anterior part. This is the left atrial appendage. So this actually uh, this the this some uh, of the perforation or the flail of the posterior leaflet. And then also you can appreciate 
the uh, core in C nicely from trans uh, from transgression view right here. I measure the size of the anterior leaflet is uh, 1.9, and also this is the uh, the real time of the anterior of the anterior and the posterior the core very nicely. And this one uh, we measure the size of the trigon to trigon. This is 2.8 centimeters. So in the using the 28 millimeter size of the ring. So this is the final thing, finding of the uh, echo. And I'll report to you after the surgery a little later. Thank you very much. Okay, so after the teeth, the diagnosis will be the rupture corneal P3, not the A3. So we have to change our plan. So for P3 corneal rupture, I know there's an expert on the panelist. Uh, what's your suggestion of the P3? Neo code or resection or auxiliary stitch? Uh, I know that Professor Mong uh, is on the panelist and Professor Chu is on the panelist. What's your opinion? Okay, so I, I think the for the diagnosis and the I code result, do you have some questions for that? So I, I, I think so. Uh, I have the question for the echo. So I want to know, uh, so I want to know how to identify the P, uh, P3 and uh, uh, C2 prolapse. How to ident identify it? The what? P3 well, plus and the commission plus. Yeah. P3 and commission? I think it's, it's uh, if you're looking, I think the red view is the looking from the 3D MVS view, like this. This is anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet. Okay, let's go to a little more details. A1, A2, A3, and P1, P2, P3. We know the microbial is the normal, the smiling face. The P1, P2, P3 right here. So this is the P3. And then if you go little uh, tilt to the right side, you can see this picture, I think it's involved, the punisher too. So I would uh, Yeah, do, do you think uh, that uh, the, 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 the P3 prolapse the or, or, or post the commercial prolapse? Yes. I think it's I maybe... Would, I would say so. I would, I would yeah. agree with you. Yeah. P3 plus the punisher. Yeah. Yeah, so... So another thing that's the uh, your uh, your suggestion is the uh, choose the uh, twenty eight size of the artificial ring. You you uh, uh, your reason is the 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 trigon the di uh, distance right? Um, Dr. Chen prefers the accurate measure. This this view to measure from the trigon to trigon. This is two point eight centimeters. So it's the, the diameter from trigon to trigon, but he preferred to use a little smaller. So he using the 26 millimeter of the, of the ring. So, so for the Dr. Chen. I'm, yeah. I'm doing the measurement, yeah. the, the surgeon makes the decisions. Because yeah. the, I, I'm using the error feature to read. The yeah. ring size is uh, measured from commercial to commercial. And the Dr. Oh. Chen is measured from trigon to trigon, which is a little bit bigger. So. Okay. When he measured 28, and my thought that's 1, 26. Later on in the OP field, we can actually measure the size of the ring that I'm going to use. So earlier, I already stuck the heart and uh, open up and extend the pathology. Now, can we show the end of him? End of him from here, Mark. Yep. Okay, this is a micro box. This is the anterior leaflet. This is the posterior leaflet. So the pathology is over here. A rupture coating of a P3. Slightly involved the commissure. Or slightly involved the commissure. So for this P3, mm -hmm. and this is a small box. Give me a 26 size. You see, this is a 26 size. 
Okay. You just pick the answer how much more up. So for this P3, if anybody suggests restructuring of the structure code or uh, code sec sec segment, or we just put a new code. Hi, Dr. Chen. I'm Dr. Chu from Far Eastern Memorial Hospital. And uh, I'm Dr. Chu. Yeah. yeah uh, according to my experience, I would suggest to put the artificial code over the P3 area. However, there are several different approach we could try. Like we could just uh, put a simple, like a figure of eight stitch to attach this prolet segment to adjacent part, even to the commissure area, to close the commissure gap, or just fix this prolet part to the uh, P2 area. And this could fix the problem because this is only the minor uh, code and only a minor segment of prolapse. And even we don't put a ring or put a band, we could have a regional annual plasty try to shorten the distance of the product segment, we could fix the problem. However, we have a different approach for this, but I will agree with you to put a ring and also try to put artificial code there, or even you just resect it, we still could have the result. So I think there are several different ways to lead the patient to a good outcome. And we will expect your result. So for the posterior display, I prefer resection. I don't like to put an artificial code because in our past experience, we put an artificial code, the PDIB nail code. And over the years, the PDIB becomes fibrosis and stick. It's like a toothpick. It's like a toothpick. And then it's stick, sticking out and causing the recurrent or micro regurgitation. So for posterior display, my personal experience, I prefer resection. But for this one, it's a small amount. So I probably agree with uh, uh, Professor Chu. I would attach these two normal calls uh, together to narrow this portion of our supported area. If we reduce the supported area below five millimeter, I think that will uh, resolve the problem of uh, Regurgitation. Yeah. I, I think uh, this is Dr. Yi. I would uh, totally agree this patient uh, because uh, his valve area is pretty small. So in this kind of situation, you don't want to do a resection because it uh, will be a uh, quite uh, reduced uh, area significantly. So nowadays for the mitral valve repair, we don't really do the resection in most cases. Uh, and this one is a particularly, you can see this one clearly is a, is a caudal rupture. I was just put the new codes that's a, uh, best way for, for this patient, the particular is that the, as a, you choose a small ring 26. I usually don't do use a 26 at all. I am minimum is most is 20, 32 sizes for the, for the, for the degeneratives. So uh, I, the, in terms of measurement, uh, I, uh, you, you based on the commercial or the, this is always debating, is it based on a commercial or based on the uh, trigon? That's a really, really, uh, interesting question because uh, co uh, companies uh, say the commercial, but uh, most people actually use the uh, trigon as a marker rather than commercial. So this is a uh, debatable. But uh, my personally, I use uh, trigon as a, as a measurement. But uh, my measurement is uh, is a major critical part is the uh, heights of the anterior leaflets, not the commercial. That's the most important because if you use a commercial, you usually reduce the size. Uh, I usually always use uh, use a. Uh, uh, height is, uh, is the most uh, important uh, uh, number to determine the size. So that's uh, my comment. So how about the... Professor Ye. So I'm putting a good uh, horizontal suture between the two adjacent normal codes. codes. Professor Dr. Ho. Dr. Ho, if you meet this this kind of patient, how do you, uh, how do you repair this? What's your procedure? Excuse me. Uh, they asked me how to. Uh, what's my opinion about this kind of repair? But to be honest, I don't have the lots of experience in repair the mitral valve. But 
since this above the area you told us is pretty small, and uh, the cold air rupture, the site of the cold air rupture is very close to the commissure. So make the you if you resect the valve, maybe well influence the the commissure, and uh, maybe a cold air uh, can solve the problem. But uh, your experience told us that the the cold air will be uh, stiffness and uh, in the uh, will make the mitral valve dysfunction again in uh, very soon. So maybe you just do the A stage the. Uh, Partial closure about the valve, maybe can can solve the problem. And another thing is the the ring, the size of the ring. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't have the answer about the the size. So, thank you. I just put a horizontal dish. One, two, I did the code. Now just check. Okay. Almost no leak. Like about the size. About the size. And Dr. Chen, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, would you remind all the audience your mitral exposure? Do you do the mitral valve repair through transeptal approach? Not only I do a lateral approach, direct airway approach, but for today I do a superior septal approach. You can see that this is a very nice exposure. I don't. I use only suction suture. You can nicely expose the mitral valve. Yes. So there's no uh, atrial retractors, anything. I just use uh, suction suture. Through suction suture, you can well expose the mitral valve. So for beginner who start to do a mitral valve repair, I think the superior septal approach, also called my atrial approach, is a good approach for uh, people who start mitral valve repair. Yeah, thank you. And I'm quite curious about your annual stitches. Some of those annual stitches looks overlapped. Only one. Only yeah. one, okay. Only one. Because uh, when I finish the last two stitches, there's a small gap here. It's about okay, I see. Millimeters. I see. So I put one okay. overlapping stitch to close this gap. So according to my understanding, you have three stitch for your anterior mitral annuals. Am yes. I correct? Two and a half. Two and a half. After is two and a half. Okay, thank you. After this stitch, we will sign in again. Other side of the Uh, may I ask one question uh, about the, the annual size? I, I want to ask uh, Professor Meng Xu uh, about the question of Dr. Ye talk about how to measure the size, the size of the annulus, the ring. And Professor Meng, sir? Meng uh, uh, what, uh, from your experience, uh, will you choose the bigger uh, ring for, for the mitral valve repair as compared in the past? Only for the uh, my my uh, experience the, for the uh, select the artificial ring. That's the uh, after water test, then you can use the the the, the sizer to measure.
to measure the anterior anterior leaflet area. So I uh, uh, I, to, uh, I I prefer to 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 use the anterior leaflet area to select the what size of the brain. Generally, uh, maybe uh, in my world about the about the seventy percent that's the thirty two. Thirty-two. So it's very unusual to use the size of uh, twenty-six. I I have never used twenty-six in all of these patients. I, maybe you have to ask Doctor Chen why, because his measurement is the twenty-six, right? Doctor Chen. Doctor Chen. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. I, I know you're busy, but uh, yeah. I, what size of the ring are you going to use? 28. 28, okay. Well, this is what I'm thinking, yeah. Well, uh, how, how big is the patient, the, so the body weight? The uh, what's the body weight of this patient? The body weight is 50, uh, 58 kilograms. Okay. And his height is about 158. What, what do you think the, 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 this guy, you, if you use the 30, 30 artificial ring, 30? Yeah, 30. How about 30 millimeters? About 30. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give, give me the 30 size of... Can we check the height of the anterior leaflets? Yeah. Yes, I already checked before. Let me check again for you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Thirty ring. See, this is thirty. I think that thirty. Thirty is okay, right? Yes, yeah. okay. Thirty yeah. is too small. Uh, too big. <laughs> why? Why is that? No, really? Not, not that. Looks like it's See, fine. It's I'm o I'm always you know I'm o I'm always afraid that if there is any sand after the surgery. Yeah, so thirty. It's way under. It's smaller than the size. Okay. <laughs> Well, since this patient uh, valve is uh, small, smaller than uh, usual, right? This is the 28. Yeah. But, but uh, the, you, you can say 28 may be smaller. Hmm? Maybe yeah. too. You, you think the 30 is larger, but I think that the 28 is smaller. Too small, right? Depend upon the, the, uh, the anterior leaflet area. So I think the I, I remember that's the yeah. maybe the, the the maybe the eight uh, uh, eight, eight years ago. So the carbon tier, the West uh, in Beijing, he he has the uh, lecture for the yeah. degenerate uh, uh, degenerated the MR. If you measure the twenty A, you can use the thirty. If you use the the measure the well, thirty, yeah. you can use the thirty two. That's the carbon tears. The, well, yeah, the I heard word. him talk about I, this. I know, he, say. What he, do you think? I, I, I remember that he said that he had to use the ring the less than 30, right? He, he, had, he had never used a ring smaller than 30. Yeah. yeah. This is what he said before, I think. Since I, he has a, a little bit of worry about uh, mitral stenosis, right? But in the era of the, the TAVI, Nowadays, you know, um, also some uh, people would like to uh, limit the size of the ring so that uh, if there is any problem in the future, you can do the transapical implantation of the valve. How about the, any other? Doctor, yeah, probably you said that before, right? That you had some comment on this. Yeah, this one, I think uh, this patient has a body size pretty small, as 50 some kilo. I think uh, eyes will be in 28 or 30. I think both will be fine. 
And it's really depend on the surgeon operator confidence uh, about the cohabitation zone. So I think that the 28 to 30, I think it both fine. If I do, I will probably choose 30. I like to be a, a large size for that. But I think of this patient, I think either, either one will be fine. In terms of uh, trans, uh, trans uh, later on is uh, uh, whether they can do the uh, valve ring. And uh, depending on what, which rings you use, so this physio two is actually pretty flexible. It's a good, uh, good uh, ring that usually can, can uh, uh, become as a circular. So uh, in terms of size of uh, a ring, which size is better? Uh, it's 28, I think uh, the, the ring is, uh, is definitely is okay for, 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 for the, for the uh, transcatheter valve. And uh, how big a size is it too big? Uh, it's very difficult to say. And the ring is, uh, depend on the ring, it's difficult to make 100% sure what the, and it's, if really flexible, we usually based on the area. What's the area? Because your circular area will be a circular area. So if really flexible, like uh, like physio two is a, a generous being pretty flexible, and another ring is called the Solin uh, 3D memo records. That's very flexible. Basically, you will become a circular. So uh, if we become a circular, you're based on the area, and then you calculate what's the valve size. But if not a flexible, and then you more rely on the AP diameter. So that's why it's different. It depends on the your ring used. So you can calculate about it, whether it's suitable for the valve in the, in the future. Okay, Dr. So, uh, Dr. Ye, you just mentioned the, the techniques of the valve in ring uh, for the transcaster treatment after the, the mitral repair. Uh, we know there's some different kinds of ring. It's a complete ring, partial ring, and uh, flexible ring, and the rigid ring. Uh, in my opinion, the, the complete ring uh, actually, is uh, maybe, uh, for example, the 3D uh, soaring, soaring ring, the three-dimensional, is easier to become to the, the round shape, <coughs> a circular shape, but it's not good to prevent for the, the sound. So for this kind of the D shape, the D shape maybe, uh, I think, is better to prevent the, 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 the sound. So what do you think about this? A good question. So generally speaking, the mitral ring, and the uh, majority of patients are probably not suitable for the, for the volume ring uh, the, due to the anterior leaflets, the LVOT obstruction. So most patients are actually screening out for the, for the, for the uh, transcatheter mitral ring. Uh, but it, you, it's really long to do the mitral ring. You ring. Can, you can actually the, disrupt the anterior leaflets first, and then you put the, put the, ring, uh, put the valve, so majority will be fine. So uh, it depends on what the, what approach you want to use. So in terms of D-shape and, uh, and, uh, and uh, flexible, the D-shape is a problem, rigid is a problem, is a, is a, is a valve is not rounded, will be a, will be a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the D-shape. So this valve is one is difficult to see or the commercial area. The second is the valve durability will be affected. So we prefer actually soft rain as a, a round shape and then you can just, uh, uh, disrupt the, the anterior leaflets before you put the valve in. So that's probably it. Yeah. And you can you can use a cut. You can uh, use uh, use uh, basically puncture the, the leaflets and then use uh, use a uh, snare and rupture that uh, just pulling and rupture the anterior leaflets and then and then you will you will not have the LVT obstruction. So that's the technique in, uh, uh, can be used for that. Or some uh, people use the actual electric electric this kind of cautery. To to uh, direct this uh, destructive leaf. Ah. Basically, you just block the anterior leaf, so which way, way you use, just break it, and then you will find. Ah. So that's a good, that's okay. a technique. Ah. Ah. Now the restart, the do the do the test, do the water test. I think it's still. I think there's no regurgitation. Okay, I will finish up the tying of the ring. Okay, and then later on we can come back to see the result. Looks great. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, if there are any uh, comment.
from the floor. Dr. B. Um, may I ask a question for uh, Dr. Chu Kuan Ming? Uh, I know you have uh, many experience about the uh, mitral band. So uh, from your current practice, uh, what's the difference from uh, to use the mitral band and as compared with the mitral ring? Yeah, I think uh, nowadays I prefer ring. Uh, because uh, we we prepare the possibility of future transcatheter uh, uh, transcatheter therapy for future recurrent MR, especially for aged patient. And uh, from my previous experience, uh, Ben and also Rin, they doesn't make any difference, but. Uh, of course, Ben, we save the time for anterior mitra annuals suture. Probably we save me like uh, four stitches and also those not tying time. And also Ben allow the, the geometry of the mitra apparatus to adapt each other to preserve. Of course, ideally, a uh, surgeon try to reshape the mitra annuals according to the studies, D-shape, 3D, shadow form, shadow shape, whatever. So surgeon try to force the mitral operators to do the way we want to. However, if we put a band, they only uh, remodel the posterior mitral annulus. So the posterior mitral annulus offer the cooperation to the anterior mitral app, uh, service. So I think it's Pretty good idea. Only the the disadvantage would be the future transcatheter therapy. So that's why I slightly changed my practice to a majority of my patient. I will put a ring on instead to put a ring, put a band. So that's a very good comment, right? Since uh, now uh, people, you know, in the in the era. Of heavy then uh, you have uh, to change your policy in making any decisions right I, I think the band is just, you're, you're just not able to receive the transcatheter implantation of the mitral valve yeah, yeah it, I, I think it's a, uh, Dr. Meng, you think it's about the time for us to shift to the um, the next uh, uh, topic yeah okay so, good. that's good so maybe uh, Dr. Chen you would just continue work and uh, Later on, you probably have the chance to show us your echo, re echo result, okay? So we have to move to uh, the, the next topic. Uh, that topic will be given by Dr. Zhang Haipo, Zhang Jiao okay? Okay. Uh, okay, uh, good morning everyone. It's my pleasure to be here to share our some uh, experience about the transcaster, uh, tricuspid valve replacement uh, techniques in our center and also uh, in China. And uh, thanks Professor Wei Zheng and Professor Yimin Xian to invite uh, me to, uh, to be here. Uh, so we all know that uh, the tricuspid, uh, the well, uh, is the disease is very common, but uh, many times the surgeons, uh, will, we would like to uh, forget about this well, and especially uh, only for the mitral valve or aortic valve uh, uh, surgery. But uh, right now, we know that we learned some <clears throat> very serious condition uh, after the right heart failure because of the tricuspid well that uh, dysfunction and uh, regurgitation. Uh, the tricuspid valve is uh, irregular shape and uh, we actually the echo uh, is not easy uh, to chat like the mitral or aortic valve and uh, we have some some more parameters uh, try to do something to describe the disease of the tricuspid valve and uh, the tricuspid valve disease actually is a uh, it is common. Uh, it, in US, it's uh, more than 1.6 million uh, of the patient. And also, if the patient has uh, progressed to the right heart failure, uh, it's, uh, the, the normal, the medicine therapy, usually the result is very poor. And uh, if the patient got the surgery again, 
and the mortality usually is very high. Uh, the STS score, we all know th this score is usually uh, to evaluate the mitral aortic valve surgery. Uh, there is another CRS score, it's a new one to evaluate the tricuspid valve uh, surgery. And uh, uh, this is a, a secondary tricuspid uh, valve regurgitation uh, after the atrial fibrillation or after the mitral valve uh, disease. Actually, it's <coughs> different from the acro uh, chest. Uh, for the tricuspid treatment for the tricuspid valve, there is some uh, uh, papers published, but only focus on the limited uh, data. Uh, we all know uh, from the mitral clip and the, the PASCO and the former, but it's still in the clinical research and uh, not many uh, data uh, for, for the human. The clinic uh, is only the trial, and also. It divided into different uh, uh, types. Uh, one of them is a suture, uh, suture annular uh, plasty. Uh, this is use a suture to just uh, shorten the, the annulus and try to uh, less uh, regurgitation. And uh, another type is the ring, uh, like the surgeon use the ring in the open heart surgery. This is a transcaster use the ring uh, annular plasty. Uh, we know some, the cardio band, the uh, multiple, and also uh, others uh, try to use. And also, there is a very interesting, uh, it's a, not in the, uh, the tricuspid valve position, it's in the, just the vena cava. And uh, you can see from the, the photos that it's just uh, uh, not modified or no touch for the tricuspid valve, just left alone, and uh, it just uh, uh, prevent the, the blood flow back uh, to the uh, inferior or superior vena cava to less the uh, symptoms of the patient, but it's uh, only the last choice. Uh, this year, there's one case uh, in, in Shanghai, in Zhongshan uh, Hospital, uh, for this kind of uh, device. And uh, uh, actually, it's the most common, and in my opinion, it's uh, uh, easier, and uh, the clinical result may be better, is uh, uh, just in the right place uh, for the tricuspid well is a replacement and uh, some types of the devices. So usually the, uh, some kind of different uh, types of the devices we use to do the uh, tricuspid well, transcaster treatment. Uh, we can see if the patient has some uh, different uh, etiology of the uh, tricuspid well, we can select to try to use these this devices although we only have the very limited data for the uh, clinic. And uh, uh, for the uh, tricuspid valve uh, replacement, the first one actually is uh, only uh, five years ago. Uh, it's uh, only short-term uh, follow-up. And uh, in, uh, there is a, a promising uh, device named the Navigate. Navigate is uh, designed only for the tricuspid valve. It's not like others. Most devices designed uh, the first for the mitral valve and then try to use for the tricuspid valve. Actually, we all know the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve, the anatomy and the position and the something, many things is different. So the first one is promising. The device is called the Navigate. We have the uh, ventricular graspers. And uh, graspers try to uh, uh, try to uh, mix uh, the valve no um, migration and uh, try to close it to the leaflet of the tricuspid valve. And also the case uh, report, only some cases we, we can see that it's a uh, very big red heart and uh, uh, red heart failure. This is a higher risk for the normal open heart surgery. And uh, the clinic uh, only a few cases are reported for the navigate. And also uh, others uh, try to use some um, different uh, uh, ways uh, to do uh, to do the tricuspid valve replacement. Uh, actually, the, uh, many try many uh, reporters use the transatrial. Uh, it's uh, uh, convenient for the surgeons to do this. So this uh, is uh, from Dr. Ye Jian's group in uh, Vancouver, and uh, it, it is uh, seven years ago reported the, uh, these uh, cases. And also others for the uh, sipping, I uh, use a valve in valve surgery, and also even uh, try to do different ways uh, to two valves. There is a valve in valve, 
and also some uh, reports focus on the violin ring for the tricuspid uh, well. And uh, we all know that the, uh, for the tricuspid, uh, there's some uh, problems and difficulties because the tricuspid well is very uh, uh, thick and uh, weakened support and the annular is even very big. And also the red heart failure and the function is poor. Uh, and also uh, surrounding the tricuspid well is some um, uh, different structures. And uh, so it's many problems uh, for this kind of uh, tricuspid well treatment. So uh, uh, both for the repair or replacement, uh, we also some tried uh, clinical trials to focus on this. Um, but the still the complication and the mortality is still very high. So right now it's uh, some devices only uh, in the clinical trial. This is Navigate. Uh, today I'm going to report the uh, it's a new one. We call it the looks looks while well. it's designed uh, actually it's combined with the surgeon. Uh, it's from Shanghai. Uh, and uh, this wire is a very unique design because you can see it's a uh, uh, has a very special anchor system. Uh, this is delivery system, and uh, you can you can see from the transatrial, from the right atrium, from small incision, and uh, uh, this wire is a self uh, expanding, and uh, it's easier to uh, coaxial. So even do not use the uh, uh, the wire. Uh, this is just to show how to do this from the right atrium and uh, adjust the angle to into the tricuspid uh, annulus into the right ventricle and then slowly to deploy the valve and the floral and the, the TEE you can see after the deploy another one is very special to just the anchor to the septum to the septum to make the well fix steadily and then remove the delivery system so so this one is finished Uh, so the, we call it a looks well, and uh, uh, this well has some uh, clinical trial uh, data and published uh, uh, in the scientific papers. And the animal experiments uh, follow up for almost one year. This is a six years uh, data. It's very good. No uh, migration of the well, and also the anchor system works very well and stable anchor. And also uh, the covered with uh, endothelial of the cells, and also uh, the fibers is, is very good. So this in our center, uh, this case is a, a female, uh, a fe a female patient is uh, seventy eight years old after three times of the open heart surgery. It is the fourth time in our center. It's a uh, very severe uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, the STS and the CRS score is very high, high risk. So we use the small incision of the right chest, only three or four uh, centimeters, and uh, we use the looks well. It's just uh, takes uh, ten minutes, I think, beating hard, and uh, the result is very good. So there's some cases uh, for the looks wells, and the STS is very high. And the follow-up uh, is no uh, migration of the, the wells, and the uh, gradient of the well is, is very good. And the symptom uh, uh, listened uh, very fast. So another is the well in well for the tricuspid uh, after the tissue well replacement. So uh, we use the, the J well, J well to do it, also from the uh, right atrium and uh, Put a J well and like the just the, like the aortic well. Okay. So right now, uh, in China, we, we have the looks well is for the uh, for the transcaster uh, tra transcaster 
to cast the valve replacement, and also we use the J valve for the valve in valve treatment. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zhang, <clears throat> and uh, bring us this uh, very uh, nice the presentation for the so advanced the technique and uh, device. So, uh, any Dr. Ye, you have uh, experienced this. Can you give us some comment? Thanks for uh, <clears throat> excellent review of the of the tricuspid transcuspid uh, tricuspid valve procedure. And uh, especially the Chinese vowel is, uh, is it Lux or Lux? Uh, no, how to pronounce it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, the, the tricuspid valve, first I will say, as surgery is the first choice for the tricuspid valve. Whatever you have a procedure or not procedure, I think a repair is, a, is a superior to the replacement for the tricuspid position. I think that's what we learned, but probably Dr. Wei, everybody know, as, as, a, as a tricuspid replacement is not. Not great. Either with a mechanical tissue valve, I think there's a, there's a failure rate is pretty high. Also, the comp and the coagulation has to be very extensive for the tricuspid valve. So I think the repair is always uh, superior to the replacement. And the internal transcaster procedure, uh, of course, there's a several repair procedure, clippers, uh, annulus, uh, all these kind of things. I think uh, the tricuspid valve most. Uh, case is a secondary is due to the dilatation of the annulus. It's a uh, very, very few patients that have no dilatation annulus and a severe tricuspid regression. That kind of situation, pretty small chance. So the clipping device is really trying to clip the leaflets. So in this kind of situation, whether this clip is a good long-term outcome, I think it's questionable without the ring. And uh, uh, with the, the ring like a band, it's like a nose user use a, uh, um, basically same as a mitral valve you so use uh, uh, the band. Uh, the, the problem is that is, is the procedure is still pretty, pretty time consuming. So that's the downside for the, uh, for the ring at this point. And the uh, replacement, uh, I think uh, the, for the tricuspid valve, now that previously we think it will be more difficult than, than tricuspid valve, now the uh, actually thinking the tricuspid valve probably is uh, easier compared to the mitral valve because the pressure is pretty, pretty low. So you need uh, just a little anchoring, you actually, uh, you anchor the valve. It's uh, really unlikely will migrate it. So as uh, initially we saw, always think the tricuspid replacement will be more difficult of, compared to the mitral. And uh, now I think the tricuspid probably is a little easier compared to the, to the, to the mitral valve. And also the RV usually is a, a big, huge. And the RVOT of obstruction is not the really common compared to the mitral position. So that's, that's why as a, as a, a replacement probably, and I know I, I cannot talk to the, some device, but, uh, but nowadays there's actually a chance because the mitral valve replacement through the family is, uh, is already started. So uh, because of, we change our uh, concept, I think it's more easy now compared to the mitral valve. So, uh, I think the, 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 the technically it's a completely feasible for the tricuspid valve repair, but uh, or replacement. But the question is uh, what's a long term outcome? Uh, that's a real question. Of course, we can do the valve in valve. That's uh, we say, you know, tricuspid valve always big size. You can put another valve, another valve. But honestly, the, the, the longevity uh, with the valve in valve still is uh, not really solved. I think it's still questionable. So I'm not sure that it's a long term outcome. Uh, in this kind of situation. Uh, as you worry about the long-term result, is the uh, about the complication of the thrombosis or the valve dysfunction? And there is, uh, as we know, this uh, low floor the area. And how about you? Yeah, the tissue valve is usually failed. It's not that because of calcification or degeneration of the leaflets. Actually, most the generation, uh, the valve problem actually is a fibrosis and the, the uh, tissue actually grows on the surface of the leaflets and the restricted leaflets. That's a real problem. Actually, if you expand the tricuspid valve replacement valve, if you take it out, you look at it carefully, actually the valve itself is not that calcified, but sometimes you can actually peel whole layers of the fibrotics and then look at the underneath, the valve is actually normal. So I think that's probably is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a far base thrombosis. It's a probably thrombosis and it becomes fibrotic. 
and the restrictive valve is tricuspid valve more than uh, mitral valve. I don't think it's a, due to the calcification and uh, the degeneration of the leaflets. So that's a that's an issue. So anticoagulation has to be a quite extensive, and the how long will be a anticoagulated patient? I, I'm not sure. I think uh, uh, me is not put a long term uh, anticoagulation if I do a replacement. Thank you, Dr. Yen. Uh, any panelists have uh, any comments? Uh, any audience have any question to ask the Dr. Zhang? Okay. okay. Uh, how, about the, how, how about the trans, transvenous? I mean, the transcava approach uh, using com combination of uh, cardio band or aneuploplasty and uh, clipping for or appro approximation of the leaflet. Uh, your 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 devices are all trans right trans atrial atrial, approach. Yeah. It's really big. How about the transvenous ones? Yeah, uh, the, the slide showed just uh, the, the first version of the wow. It's, uh, it's a big size. It only can use the, the, the chest, the way the transatrial. And uh, right now, the second version of the wow is designed for the, the transvenous transfemoral. So maybe two years or something, we can have the, the smaller size. Yes, I mean, uh, as uh, Professor Ye said, uh, the total replacement of the valve carry a risk of uh, long term. Uh, poor outcome because of the thrombogenesis, and uh, maybe repair is another better option. Do you think so? Yeah, it's a very good question, and uh, in the meeting, it's uh, very easy to uh, has some discussion of this uh, question. Uh, actually, in my opinion, actually in China right now, the the micro clip or other clip is not available right now in China. And uh, this well, the looks well, is uh, only the first one uh, available in China right now, but it's still in the clinical trial. Um, uh, in my opinion, yes, you are right. Uh, sometimes we can try to do the, the clip and also uh, other ways to do repair. Uh, the tissue well is still a problem for the long-term results. We need some uh, active correlation and other uh, problem, so yes. Any others have any other kind of question? Okay, thank you, Dr. Zhang. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, <laughs> we Let's move to the next topic. And next topic will be presented by Dr. Ye, Professor Ye. Uh, without any mention, he's so well known. He's also the course director of the Taipei Valve Summit. So uh, before his presentation, I, I, I think it's my responsibility to pay my respect as a follower. He's the, uh, now he's the clinical professor and also director of research of, uh, and also the faculty of medicine of University of British Columbia, Vancouver. His most important contribution will be the, for the last few years, he has been the attending cardiac surgeon in St. Paul Hospital and the Vancouver General Hospital. He has been all the way the pioneer for transcatheter trans therapy for structural heart, structural heart disease. Uh, I think most of us uh, learn from him a lot. He has been well known in the world, especially in the Asia Pacific area. So today, he's going to give us the talk, Surgeon's Perspective on Mitral Clip for Functional MR. Let's welcome Professor Yin. Thank you for your nice introduction. How many cardiologists here? First, I want to know. The <laughs> uh, I think, that as the, unfortunately, Dr. Quibi is not here. I had to have a chat with him, and he really strongly supported that surgeon, so uh, he's not here right now. <laughs> Okay, so I will ask it to, to give this talk. Uh, this is my disclosure. So, uh, in terms of mitral regurgitation, as everybody knows, there's uh, the basic two types: of structural, the functional, and the structural is the valve itself, and the functional is due to the 
either AOV dilatation or, or the annuous dilatation. That's a different, actually, annual dilatation more relate to the to the age of chronic atrial fibrillation, you just pure uh, annual dilatation, and of course the the, the functional regurgitation, and uh, uh, otherwise due to the LV enlarge is the tethering of the leaflets, of course the functional uh, the uh, MI. So in terms of func uh, structure, I think uh, there's no no questionable at this point the surgery is uh, way superior than any other transcatheter procedure. Uh, even in the elderly and uh, even like the 80s, uh, still still the repair is, is, is superior. Actually, last week I, I repaired the mitral valve at the, uh, in the woman who is 90 years old. So whether I repair, the people will say your repair replacement. I say I, my threshold for repair is very, very, very low. Uh, replacement is very high. So she's very good at 90. I still repair. The, the reason is repair because uh, she has a chronic atrial fibrillation. So as I combine the com uh, uh, abrasion and the mitral repair, she may doesn't need the anticoagulation for the long term. So that's the main main uh, uh, purpose for the repair. Of course, uh, you know, in terms of benefit in this kind of patient repair versus replacement, is there any significant benefit? I think uh, otherwise is, is not really. But as this uh, is a chronic age of fibrillation, I think they potentially reduce the uh, anticoagulation. So no doubt as for the uh, uh, structure, I think the surgery is still the, uh, still the uh, far uh, superior uh, procedure compared to any other procedure. So uh, second, in terms of functional MR, so as I uh, mentioned, there's a, there's a, there's a, it's not a really valid stuff. Most likely the other things that cause the, 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 the mitral valve problem. So the definition was also the troubling because all days before actually there's no trouble. Everybody's uh, definition is the same. Is that if, if the regurgitation volume greater than 0.4, that's considered as severe. And there's a few years uh, uh, before, and the AHAC changed to the uh, 0.2. And, uh, and now the, everybody considers a little bit of functional regurgitation as a severe. So at that time, I was, uh, I, was uh, I don't believe that the change is, uh, is uh, correct, because the 0.2 is very, very small. And most of you think it's just mild uh, regurgitation. Now the, everybody could become f f severe, and there needed to be a procedure. Uh, so I, I was a doubt. And then the, the uh, 2017 upper updated the AHAC, they sick quickly. I changed because I believe there's a lots of people didn't follow that criteria because there's, there's, there's no reason or evidence to change it from a for, for basic cut down for 50% becoming uh, severe. So they change back to the 0.4, but the Europeans still consider uh, as severe as 0.2. So the definition of severe is still the uh, not the consistent yet. That's the main main issue uh, when I talk about is that a two clinical trial later on. So you have to know this definition is different, very really different uh, in terms of European and uh, and uh, America right now. So the prognosis of second MR and there's a data actually pretty showed is, a, is a, if you don't fix it, have a, have a poor. Uh, prognosis. So that's a, that's a quite a fair paper already demonstrated. Even in some paper, even the mild uh, regurgitation actually also reduce uh, uh, survival. So that's uh, there's evidence some uh, uh, you know and uh, report. So uh, the one that is a, is a sort of the landmark uh, surgical randomized trial. This is a surgical randomized trial, not many papers. If you look at the literature, uh, there's not too many surgical randomized trial the, uh, uh, study. Uh, so that's why a surgeon always criticized by the cardiologist because you are all the non-evidence-based uh, practice because you don't have a randomized trial. But it, you, you should understand, I always take, tell the cardiologist, you should understand is uh, some patient you cannot randomize. You cannot leave the, the, the patient that need the surgery and they keep in the uh, uh, Medical treatment, that's not an ethic. So, and in general speaking, you can't do the random trial. So, this is a, as a, as a, as a random trial as a repair versus a replacement. In the second the MR is published quite early, and the 251 patient in load. Uh, and you can see that as the surgical uh, data, there's no difference between the two groups. And uh, in terms of survival, followed by one year, two year. And in the first year, so does there's a change, a slightly high mortality uh, in the replacement group and compared to repair, but the statistical is not significant. And the two-year follow-up definitely is no different uh, between the two uh, groups in terms of survival. <coughs> but in terms of recurrence, you can see, see here, and uh, the first year recurrence is 32% after repair. This repair most of it just for the ring, uh, most just the ring, a downsized ring. And, uh, 
two years, more than 50% is a recurrent. So that's a moderate severe. That's a very, very high recurrent. After two years of more than half, actually, the developers are moderate to severe. So it's, a, it's really concerning. And also, you can see the heart failure and the readmission to the hospital, and also high in the repair group. So that's, I think, related to the uh, rec uh, recurrent the regurgitation. And uh, there's another paper. How about the recurrent uh, MI? Where is the effect of the long-term survival? So there's a study. This is published uh, this year uh, from Europe, uh, Switzerland, or oh, Netherlands. And uh, they basically, <coughs> excuse me, I have allergies. This year, terrible. So the 261 patients that they followed and uh, see as uh, a basically regurgitation including that uh, uh, grade two and above. So to see there's any long-term effect in terms of survival. So this is a, as a baseline characteristic. You can see the recurrent and the non-recurrent are highlighted in the square. <coughs> they're quite a different in, in terms of echo data. So basically in the rec recurrent patient, they have a have a, a large LV size compared to the non-recurrent uh, recurring the MI patient. So this is definitely the baseline different uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 the echo findings. And uh, of course, surgical data is not really significant between the two uh, group recurring the non-recurring patient. And uh, the recurring accumulation, uh, uh, the predicted uh, for recurrent is one is the grade of MI, more severe, more, more chance of recurrent, and the ALV size. That's a two major independent predictor for recurrent. So we have to think about this uh, in the you know, uh, patient selection. And how about the effect on the long term? And you can see there's a significant long term uh, 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 post survival in the, in, the, in the patient with the recurrent. But uh, whether this is, a, is definitely due to the recurrent or due to the baseline. LV uh, dilatation or the, the, this kind of situation. It's difficult to say. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, but a uh, uh, multi uh, variant analysis uh, showed that this uh, is a recurrent actually is a, is a, is a independent risk factor uh, uh, for the post survival. So based on all these uh, previous publications about the function of MR treatment and then recommendation, you can see the ACC and the uh, uh, ESC uh, recommendation. Almost same, but slightly different. The, the basic one is if you're a patient with symptomatic uh, combined uh, functional MR for other cardiac surgery, uh, is a class one in the uh, in, uh, uh, European guideline and a class 2A in the uh, American guideline. So that's basic 2A and the 2A, 1A. 1A is, uh, one is, uh, is a definite surgery and the 2A is uh, also surgery, surgery better than not surgery. So generally speaking, if you you for other surgery and the mitral function mitral valve should be fixed. That's the uh, general, I think, uh, agreed by by majority of the uh, cardiologist and the cardiac surgeon. In terms of other things, is a, is a isolated uh, functional MR is really questionable, either 2A or 2B. So uh, there's no really strong evidence say the uh, surg surgery for the functional MR is really superior than the medical treatment or other treatment. So that's the recommendation at the, at the moment. But in the years, I think the, the guideline will be changed because the mitral clip of the data is, will, will come out. I think it will be updated in the next year or two. So in uh, general speaking, the, the mitral valve is not for the surgery quite a high uh, instance in the high, high uh, elderly patient and the low EF patient. That's usually the two major concerns for surgery is the one's age. That's uh, still the, the, the currently most surgery for the over 80 years or the uh, or the like EF is low. Generally speaking, we are trying to do a surgery. That's that's the particular fun function, of course, no 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 doubt. And uh, now I'm talking about the uh, focus on mitral clip. It's basically is uh, uh, trying to mimic the alphabet, uh stitch. But I uh, just uh, interesting. I just want to put this uh, few sentences here. My uh, the the alphabet stitch was the, as I introduced quite early in nineteen, I think it's the, uh, 1993, and uh, as mainly on 1995, it's mainly for for the for the fun as a degenerative mitral regurgitation, not for functional. 
So that's a different. And uh, it's basically initially used for the anterior leaflets because uh, at that time it's a new called the caudal replacement. It's a very, very challenging procedure. Not too many people can do it. So, and then you cannot do the resection for the anterior. So that's why you use our first stitch to try to hook onto the onto non uh, prolapse P2 and uh, fix the problem and then just, uh, you know, quicker surgery and then fix it. So that's, uh, that's the goal, uh, purpose of this, uh, uh, this uh, procedure. And then, of course, uh, used for the bilos valve because because the uh, initial bilos valve sort of will be really challenging to repair, but nowadays the bilos valve actually is a really easy repair because the more tissue, more uh, uh, simple repair, actually simple repair. So it's not an issue. So the, this uh, first stitch is not really used in the in the curling the. Uh, surgical practice. I don't think uh, most uh, uh, panel here, I don't think they use our first stitch. I, I never used our first stitch in my mitral uh, repair for, for, for so many years. Uh, so, so mitral clipper is trying to mimic, but as uh, initially approved for the degenerative, I think that's uh, reasonable because as a uh, mimic uh, our first stitch, uh, the first stitch designed for the for the P2 progress. So mitral clipper trying to use this for the for the degenerative, but now as a shift to the uh, functional uh, mitral regurgitation. So the, this our uh, first stitch is, uh, is not really for functional MR. So the study is uh, you know uh, uh, initial the study ever. Was the study that's the uh, basically shows no difference uh, bet, uh, between the two group, but uh, now the two major try I just want to mention is the one is a, is a mitral IF try that's a European try. So uh, the basic patient is a symptomatic functional MI. It uh, could be ischemic or could be non-ischemic, and uh, the definition. So that's a very critical part. Is the definition is a, is a 0.2 as a considered severe sec, uh, second mitral regurgitation, and the EF, EF 15 to 40. So that's a range is too, too, too uh, high, it's not included, and a uh, hard team decision. So the basic result is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is no, no superior. Basic is uh, both uh, is very uh, similar medical treatment and the uh, mitral clipper device. Uh, in terms of any sub analysis, is no no really uh, superior benefit with the mitral clipper uh, versus uh, medical treatment. So conclusion, is it feasible or safe? Yes, this procedure is very safe, very feasible, no problem. That's the, that's the reason the mitral clipper has been so spread because uh, all those cardiologists say it's simple, no risk. Why try it? If failed, you do surgery. That's, the, that's the, a basic argument for the, for the use of mitral clipper or all these patients. So this is feasible, yes, very safe, very safe procedure, very controlled procedure, and if failed, you can do surgery. Yes, that's, uh, that's I think, is uh, right. But the way benefit, in terms of benefit, not sure. So, but the mitral clip is pretty expensive, and uh, and in the in our institute is actually highest the 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 cost for for all the transcatheter procedure, the mitral clip. So uh, the co-op try, this is a US try. So the difference is the definition we know is already different, and uh, the the uh, original. So this is a basic as a as a, as a medical versus a, as a clip as a, a similar like this, but as a, the criteria I want to highlight one is of course is the severity definition different point four. Second is a is a very critical part is a is a patient that actually the failed maximized tolerance medical management or C, CRT. So that's a very critical part maximum tolerate. So that means there's nothing you can do. It's not optimal. It's, that's different. Optimized treatment and the maximum tolerated, that's totally different the term. So you, you cannot use just optimized. That should use the maximum tolerable medical treatment. So because I will uh, discuss later on. So, so uh, oh, I suppose it go down. So the exclusion rate is 58%. So that means more than half percent of the patient actually the original sink is a, is, a, is, a, is a suitable, but they end up with a 50 percent, more than 50 percent excluded. So it's a very select patient group. And the uh, mitral is about a 30, 30, uh, the European child is about a 30, a little over 30 is excluded, non eligible. So that's a little different, a little bit different there. And uh, of course, the outcome is, uh, is the main driven by the rehospitalization. So this is a combined the heart failure and hospitalization, and uh, uh, so there's a huge difference between the medical treatment and mitral clip. So you can, uh, you can see the, uh, the follow-up of two years, a huge difference. And uh, all cause mortality, there's some difference there. So the conclusion, I think, uh, is, is, uh, it's a fair conclusion in the paper. So who remained symptomatic despite a maximally tolerable uh, GDMI guideline 
uh, direct medical treatment. So that's very critical. You have to fail and maximize uh, medical treatment. There's no other options. So this is a different. As a, as a mitral AFI, no, no, no basic benefit. A co-op is a benefit. So this is a big argument. You, you now go to the chance cast uh, meeting. This has been a uh, very, very hot topic. Almost every meeting is mentioned about this. But my opinion is, uh, is a different, major difference, just two, two things. One is, uh, is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a mitral, the degree of mitral is a regurgitation different. European one is, uh, is a milder, more, less uh, regurgitation, and uh, European is more severe. And the uh, heart size also different. And the uh, yeah, U.S. one is a, is, a, is a smaller LV, and the European one is a larger LV. So we know the larger LV is have a poor prognosis, right? So and then uh, uh, the basic uh, the U.S. one is a small LV, but they have a more regurgitation. European one is actually uh, is a larger LV, has a less regurgitation. So that's totally a different group of patients. And the uh, second is a uh, is more important one is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, uh, inclusion criteria. The basic U.S. try medical group has no any option. So you can't increase the medical, medical treatment anymore. There's no CRT available. So this group is basic palliative treatment. And the clinical, clinical uh, group actually you give additional with, uh, device to reduce the uh, mitral regurgitation. So European one is actually you, after randomized, you still can optimize, maximize medical treatment and reverse the clip. So that's, you can see the different. The control group actually is, is uh, in the co-op is, uh, is basically no any, any option. So it's more palliative treatment. So that's why they, they, they make it so the huge difference because of additional benefit from a match group. So I think that's very really critical. So you can see that there is in the European trials, the majority is, uh, is, uh, is less than 30, and the US actually the majority is uh, more than uh, 30. So that's very really critical as a, a regurgitation amount is totally different. And uh, uh, in the, in the uh, co-op uh, co trial, so they could, did the uh, subgroup analysis. If patients are less than EO, EROA, less than 30, actually there's no effect, even in the co-op trial. So that means uh, it's the same as the European, because European is the most of the patient, the majority is less than 30 mm. So that's why in the European has no really the big benefit, particularly also medical group have a continual treatment. So there's no benefit. But in the co-op trial, in this sub analysis, this group of patient also has no benefit. So the summary based on this is published editorial. So basically right now is the standing the mitral clip benefit of patient is basically is a very, very select patient. Very select patient. Basically is a is the RV is not too big. And the MR has to be severe. Okay, that's the two things that you have to. And also has to be maximized medication treatment. In this group, subgroup, there's a benefit. Any other uh, patient that um, doesn't meet this group, there's an, no benefit or still uh, not answered. I think that's a very imp important message. So this is uh, just a summary. Basically, this group of patients, there's a potentially benefit from a mitral clip. Uh, uh, for this small select patient group. So, and then you look at the recurring, if based on the uh, previous paper I mentioned, if greater than two or uh, two or greater than two uh, recurring, there's a significant uh, effect on the survival. So you can look at it as a, a two clinical trial. If you're including two plus two, there's a quite high recurrent. Co-op trial recurrent is, uh, is two to three. You can see it's about uh, uh, 30%. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a one year, and the, the uh, my choice is about 50 percent. So the recurring, if including two, is also significant. So the, how about the long-term survival? It's really I don't know. You can see the previous study beyond the two years. Actually, the, within two years, there's no effect on the recurring the, uh, MI. But beyond the two year, actually decrease the decrease the effect on the survival. So right now, the follow-up on the two year. So whether it's beyond the two year, this, this benefit is, uh, is whether it's still uh, persistent or not, we don't know, because it's a recurring MI. So this is a basically interesting, the each medication and the clip, how many patients need to treat it to save one basic, uh, uh, the, 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 the reduce the 
you know, basically the treat to prevent the one death. So you can see the medication, each medication has a, a different, so the highest 24 and the mitral clip is a six, but the mitral clip is six is a very select patient. In that group, if you treat the six patient, you benefit the one, uh, basically you save one life. But it's very specific group of patient. Medical is, is numbers high, but these are the broad patient, all coming patient, usually. So, but if you combine all the medication, you can combine three or four, so your probably effect is a, is a much uh, greater. So that's why I think, uh, so the, in terms of mitral replacement, whether this will be mitral repair in the future is better, I don't know, that, that's difficult to say. Uh, at this moment, whether the mitral transcaster mitral valve repair will benefit better than the, uh, the mitral clipper. I think it's difficult to say, sorry. So this is a, I put some graph, uh, I don't know if this is, a, is this a correct or not. I just, uh, on the airplane, I just put this one there. So I think the function MR, still the major, majority should have mitral as a medical treatment as a first. That's the first line, I think it should be. Unless the patient has severe MR for other valve surgery, I think that the surgical uh, repair, I think it should be considered. And uh, uh, a synchronized therapy, if patient clearly has the indication, I think it should go to synchronized therapy. I think it's uh, really effective, actually. We, we have uh, uh, quite a patient that just sent for the for synchronization, and it, uh, after the <laughs> put it in, as a mitral regurgitation is severely decreased. So I think that's, a, and after medication, if you fail to resist medication, I think that's, that's the option there. You transplant the mitral clip or the, or the even like a chance to get the mitral replacement. But don't forget the palliative treatment. So some patient you have to consider is probably better to have a palliative care rather than you, you give her all the, the transcaster procedure with, uh, without knowing long-term outcome. So I think the, don't forget this, uh, this, uh, this uh, palliative care uh, issue. So end up with this uh, heart team. Heart team is more important for the mitral valve and tricuspid valve. As the aortic valve is uh, less so now because of the, it's a more broader uh, indication right now. But in the, in the, in the start of the center, I think uh, uh, heart team is very critical for, even for the TAVI aortic valve. But uh, in the well, like uh, the, the established TAVI uh, center, I think a mitral valve is very, very critical and it should be more included into the heart failure cardiologist and the valve repair surgeon. So these are patients that has to be reviewed by the heart team and the surgeon has to, to express your opinion. Very critical for these kind of patients. I think if we always do the everything, the patient should be first. That's a very critical. Patient first, not in, nothing else. Patient first, whether they benefit or not. Thank you. Very much, Professor Ye. I think it's a, a great uh, review and a summary for us uh, to to have a more understand understanding for functional MR. Uh, so this topic uh, open for discussion. Is there any question from the floor or from a panelist, Professor Wei? Well, I think your last two slides is most uh, uh, you know impressive since uh, you know I, I believe that only part of the, some cert a certain part of the functional MR, uh, MR can be treated uh, with the mitral clip. So. Uh, Maybe in the future, the people can find out what kind, what subgroup of uh, secondary MR uh, can be treated by CLIP. Maybe some some indications, uh, right? Like uh, the annular size, or the uh, including the annular size or the coagulation co zone, or mm, the nature of the the, <coughs> the cause of the uh, uh, secondary MR, something like that. Yeah, I think uh, at this moment, the evidence is really with uh, the, 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 the benefit, like a, as, a, as a, a really select patient. So uh, as a how many percent, you know, even in the, in the co-op trial is a, is a, is a 58% excluded. So that patient already screened and the 58% excluded. But if you, you consider all coming uh, function a patient with a function MR, how many patients actually the percentage really meet this is the criteria probably is not too too many uh, patients. So, 
So I think, uh, yes, there's a benefit for sure. There's some patient I think definitely benefit if there's no other option and the medical failed. I think uh, I totally agree there's a small. So the, I think in the future, the try is really want to define the, which group of the patient does really benefit from the clip, which mitral clip, because it's pretty, pretty expensive uh, uh, device. But, uh, but in terms of procedure, it's very safe. Very safe. Uh, usually, patients don't die from there, and the complication is extremely low. So that's uh, that's really the, the advantage of the mitral clip. Uh, thank you. Well, it is uh, estimated that maybe only twenty five percent of patients uh, can un can benefit from 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 mitral clip because uh, Sebo Ka, who is a master in this field and the proponent of mitral clip, uh, he he do micro clipping for maybe 100 or 200 cases per year, but he only uh, donate uh, 51 cases in this study. So that means it's really a highly selective right. pop population. In clinical practice, uh, your algorithm is really good. Maybe we should put the patient on optimal medical treatment, and then, if possible, uh, CRT. Then if the patient is still refractory and with uh, more than three plus, more than or equal to three plus of MR. That means the mechanical component, mitral regurgitation, play a major role in the half year of vicious cycle. Then we stop the uh, the mitral regurgitation that may benefit the patient. I agree. I agree. I think the the one definition. I think uh, I believe the European uh, probably will change the definition back to the point four. That's my guess. I, I don't know because uh, particularly with this two trial, we show there's a the uh, uh, European trials is no no benefit, right? So it could be just definition that's that's really the is a major effect on the on the on the on the outcomes. So I believe this will be will be probably changed back to the old days point four, because the AHA, CACC they change really quickly. Uh, regarding to the ischemic MR, what would be your suggestion for those young surgeons? If they are treating the uh, ischemic heart disease, let's say we are going to have a cabbage and the patient have ischemic MR, like a two or three plus, what would, you, what would be your suggestion for them for their primary strategy for <coughs> mitral valve surgery? And so you think it's STEMI or non-STEMI? So first, the patient has STEMI or non-STEMI? Non-STEMI. Non-STEMI. So they basically come in with like unstable angina or this kind of for coronary artery bypass uh, surgery. So the another function MR is a two or plus three plus two and three plus. Whether they need to collect or not. That's a, that's a main question. So my my own practice, uh, there's no really data show, but uh, but as a randomized trial, there's another trial actually moderate that you repair. There's no nothing to uh, affect the uh, long-term outcome. And the severe, whether there's an effect, I think there's some effect, not for the death, but at least the heart failure, the more uh, the hospital uh, readmission is uh, reduced. So I think, uh, you know, there's no standard right now, but in uh, my opinion, or in my practice, in, in this kind of situation, I look at the ALV fun functions. If ALV functions are pretty good, pretty good, and the ALV is not dilated, for the two plus, I won't do anything. You bypass, you will fix it. Don't do anything. If you put a ring there, not necessarily better, because you actually reduce the, so there's a natural valve its function. You may actually affect the ALV function. So if the, if really truly moderate or the less than moderate, I don't think it should be treated this kind of patient. But if a patient clearly has a infarct area and the ALV is really severely dilated, and you do a bypass unlikely will collect this kind of situation. So you probably need a more aggressive to put the ring, put the ring. But if more than moderate, is close to the severe, I think in that kind of situation, since the ring is a very, very small, uh, uh, it's a simple procedure, and it doesn't affect the uh, add too much uh, operator risk. So if we're close to the severe, I think put the ring is a reasonable. But whether you want to downsize significantly, don't think you should downside like all days we uh, put the 26 or 24 even ring. I think that's not a benefit 
uh, for, for the long term. So I think you just uh, slightly uh, reduce the size, reduce the amount of the regurgitation, that's enough. So that's my, my practice and my opinion. So you look at echo by yourself, as don't based on the report, because the report doesn't mean anything. Because it could be a general like EF was 30%. You report 30%, but if you look at your echo by yourself, if it was a globally reduced, that's not a problem. As a, as a left the main or the critical stenosis, you put as a bypass, this heart will be beating. If you use 30% is with, with the infarct area and the localized uh, this uh, kinetic or the hyperkinetic, these kind of patients probably not not the uh, uh, correct mitral valve after the guy by bypass. So I suggest really important for this kind of patient, look at imaging by yourself before you make a decision, not based on the uh, report. That's my uh, opinion. Yeah, so following this question, so what would be your suggestion if we compare the result from the trial, reduction annual versus mitral valve replacement? Uh, in the long run, the same. If 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 it's severe, with the EF was pretty good, a global rate reduced uh, reduction of the EF and the ALV is not thinned. I think the repair is better. If the as the ALV is really severely dilated and the wall is thin and the clearly there's an infarct area in that kind of situation, or particularly coronary artery is not critical stenosis. If most of the three vessels is seventy percent, these kind of patient. You, you repair, not necessary to, to correct the function, better to have a replacement for this kind of group of patient. So that's how I will look at the echo and I look at the stenosis. If the stenosis left me 80%, critical 90%, and the ALV, particularly ALV, not the same, the dilated, these patients, you put a bypass, you, you will fix it. So uh, I will just do a ring, not the replacement. That's my opinion, but it's not necessarily correct. Uh, uh I think the, some experts maybe depend upon the uh, uh, the mitral tethering, the echo result. Do you have some uh, standard for the tethering? No, uh, to, use I, to, to use the repair or repair? I personally, I don't like to use the number too much. I look at echo by myself. I look at echoes a lot. Every patient I will look at echo uh, by myself. So the reason is uh, number is number, right? Just like a left main height, 10 centimeter, 10 millimeter, or the five millimeter, I don't care. And I look at the CT, if a seven millimeter is still good at sinus or something, I just do it. So I don't, I don't practice, I don't really follow the number, just like a same. There's lots of measurement, the angle, what's the degree, what's the, the, the distance. I don't look at this, I just look at the echo by myself. It's, it's a, you have a sense, this is a critical knot. And, uh, and then for the, a function same. They they say ten is more than a centimeter or something like that. The deep position usually is not good for repair. But if EF is normal, EF is pretty good. And the LV is uh, is not a severely dilated and not a thinned, and a very critical coronary artery disease. You bypass this patient, there will be will be a beautiful function. They will correct it. I think the repair will be even deep. The repair probably is still will be. A, will be feasible. I look at the echoes uh, as I think is critical. Uh, but of course, if you really pulling down significantly, I think that's uh, due to indicators of your, your, your apical dilatation is really severe. So in that kind of situation, I think a replacement is, a, is a probably is a, a better option. But that's, a, that's actually is also correlated to your, your ventricular size, right? Depending on how much tethering, how much is the, basically you end up with the ventricular size. So that's why you look at the ventricular size is really critical. I think it's also for the decision making. I think it's very, very helpful. My, my suggestion, look at echo by, surgeon. you need to look at echo by yourself, not just report. That's the uh, main, you know, uh, suggestion for me. Uh, so, Dr. Yeah, I have a question about the, <clears throat> the, the rim uh, annular plasty for the ischemic MR. We all know that the ischemic MR only put a, maybe a small ring is not good for long-term result. But still some groups, for example, the Dr. Terry David from Toronto and other groups, they have another uh, uh, procedure, for right. example, to enlargement of the, uh, the lip lid because the, the tethering of the mitral valve and you put uh, the uh, enlargement of the uh, lip lid, maybe it's better to uh, have the uh, enough cohabitation. So what do you think about this procedure? Uh, I personally, I don't do the, the, the ischemic valve enlargement. 
I do the like uh, lumetic or the other things I do enlargement because the enlargement I I'm not sure that how about the long term because of the leaflets are usually calcified. There's some patients not calcified, but sometimes they they develop a calcification. So and also ischemic mitral regurgitation. I think the patient probably died long term, not from just valve. It's mainly from the ventricular itself. So that's why how aggressive you want to repair the valve, I think is different from the from a rheumatic and the primary valve disease. For the primary valve disease, we want to do everything we can to, to fix the valve because of the effect of long term. But for the, for the, for the ischemic, I think that's the questionable. Is the valve causes the uh, die or the other uh, 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 muscle cause the die? So that's why I don't do the very aggressive for this repair. I think I, my opinion is the replacement is still pretty good. And as long as you preserve the anterior posterior leaflets. You have to preserve anterior and posterior leaflets. I think that's most important when you do the repair or replacement in the ischemic to prevent the heart as a global dilatation. I think that's, a, that's my opinion. Sorry. Well, just uh, uh, want to, to express my uh, uh, gratitude to Dr. Ye. And that's also, I totally agree with your last saying of talk, talking about the sense. Well, I, I think most of the surgeons know that um, uh, the number is not important. We always count on our feeling and sense instead of the number. Sometimes the blood pressure looks like 80, but you feel that the aorta is just 122, 120, right? So because the number is sometimes it's wrong. So uh, as, you, uh, as you say that uh, any kind of feeling, but the feeling is has, has to accumulate by your experience. So uh, uh, the sense uh, by the surgeon is uh, very, very important, right? So that, like you say, taught, taught us to do the continuous surgery for the aortic valve. And uh, since uh, your last uh, lecture, and we start to do the continuous surgery for, your, uh, for the aortic valve, and we totally agree with this technique, and uh, uh, we now we'd like it to do the continuous surgery for the aortic valve replacement since uh, you can replace the uh, one size bigger or even two size bigger than previously we did for the in, with the uh, interrupted sutures. This is a, a kind of feeling and uh, well we uh, catched you know uh, your uh, concept and we start to do it and uh, we feel very well okay so this is also kind of feeling is that right? Thank you for your support. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Ye. So I think, oh, oh, oh one short question. OK. <laughs> uh, I know uh, some uh, mitral stitch uh, technique in mainland China. So what do you comment as compared with the mitral clip and mitral stitch? I mean, the transapical device. Uh, what, what's your opinion about uh, the two devices? I think, uh, you know, stitch and the, the, the clip, I think it's very similar. Uh, one thing to take, you know, uh, concept is the same, right? But it just stitch probably is uh, better than clip because clip is mechanical and also there's a slight gap between the clips. They are not the cooperation like completely, sutures completely. So the concept is the same. But I think the, in terms of transapical versus transfemoral, I think, uh, and for the long term, I think it has to be a transfemoral or for this kind of device. And the transapical for the long term, I think the, 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 uh, the probably will be limited uh, if, if the uh, transfemoral available. So I think uh, they need a precaution. I think for the few years, I think it's okay, but for the long term, they had to, had to change the strategy because otherwise uh, won't survive for the long term. That's my opinion. Yeah, thank you, Professor Ye. So let's move to the next section. The next section will be live demonstration. And we will start with the post-procedure discussion with Dr. Chen. You want to come to the stage? Yeah. You, you want to uh, make a brief? Maybe we can go yeah. back to the OR to see the final result from the T. Dr. Xiong? Yes, OK. Now, to check the final result. So uh, I think now uh, let's look at uh, from the first view. And uh, LV, LA, 
and the RVRA, they all get compressed nicely because the patient still have a little bit of uh, dopamine. A little bit of air there, and uh, the micro rings right there. And then you can see from the portrait view, the micro bulb really opens nicely. Now, if I go back to the Lois view, this was uh, recorded a uh, few minutes ago, so a little air is still there, but then not now. The micro bulb opens nicely. It was up right here, and it already contrasts nicely, right there. Now let's turn on the colors, check the final result. Nice looking micro inflow, and no micro regurgitation at all. So I really con congratulate Dr. Chen and the Professor Wei's team did an excellent job at the echo point of view. So now let's check the gradient across the microbiome with repair. The maximum gradient is five, the mean is three. This is under the, the, the dopamine. And now let's look the 3D from the LLM phase view of from LA. You can see they put the, it's a 28 millimeter of uh, the, the rings right there, and the stitch is right here. And then if I put the color down, there's nothing, almost none, MRs at all. So I think they did uh, an excellent job for this uh, patient. So Dr. Chen asked me to uh, do a little uh, calculation of the microbiome. So I uh, using the from the LD side view of the microbiome. So then uh, I trace the area. I've got two and two. This is uh, 2.8 centimeters. So it's uh, I think it's a pretty good size of the micro opening for the result of this uh, micro bulb repair. So I really think this is a perfect uh, operation for Dr. Chen and his team and under Dr. Wei's supervision. And that's my final conclusions. Really good. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chen. So anybody <laughs> comment on this one? <laughs> May I ask you if uh, the, the flare happens to A3 instead of P3, then what will you do? Uh, if A3 is very close to commercial, I probably do the same thing. But if it's uh, close to A2, then I have to put an artificial cord. Uh, if you close to commercial, sometimes when you have a cord rupture close to commercial, the commercial is always involved. So you have to, maybe you just do a uh, similar procedure, use the commercial core and close the gap. And at the same time, you can bring the commercial leaflet down toward the ventricle and prevent the regurgitation from the commercial. Yeah. Uh, previously, we have an extensive discussion regarding the size. Uh, what if, if a 30 ring was used? Yes, you can see that the co-optation length is about, you see that it's about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, because you see the Hey, Dr. Xiong, can you put back to the previous? Oh, sure. You want this? No, 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 the 2D. You want this? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The marker on the right-hand side, the one gap is one centimeter. So you see the co-optation length is about 0.5. If I put a 30, you will bring the anterior and posterior further apart. Then the, you may not have enough co-optation. How about Dr. Ye and uh, Professor? Mong's opinion on, on this ring? Uh, maybe uh, uh, in my hospital, they, they, they scan, uh, this patient, I think I prefer use the uh, 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. at least the 30. At least. Yeah, because that, the, the first thing that's that depend upon the area of the anterior, uh, anterior leaflet area. So uh, at, at this situation for this patient, maybe the smaller, uh, 20, 28, the smaller, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 and uh, you think that the 30 is the larger, yeah. I prefer okay, the larger, larger one. That's my uh, opinion. Huh. So another thing that I think the, the, when you choose the artificial ring, 
so uh, can make the uh, anterior uh, leaflet movement is very important. Yes. I mean, the you have to uh, keep the the, the sp space for the 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 anterior leaflet to go in the. A little the domain. Big jet, the shed mm -hmm. that's very very important. Okay. So. I think yeah, but uh, maybe maybe the thirty a uh, lot. No, right now they, this patient and the heart rate at the sixty. Yeah. Oh, right now, yeah, they're sixty. 80. So your sixty, that's the that's the PG about the five uh, uh, five mm HG. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can you you use the the, the thirty ring. So maybe uh, the patient. Uh, when the seventy or eighty, you you really oh, okay. can get the the, the 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 normal PG. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. Okay. Idea that's Thank you. Uh, first, the congratulations, uh, excellent result. Uh, I think uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned, this is, uh, I think a weight is a body size. Uh, Doctor Wei asked is about the size. I think a very important that you. Uh, as also you select a uh, uh, size, uh, like a ring size, you have to look at the patient size. I think that's important mm -hmm. because sometimes you want a uh, ring size up and down, it really doesn't make a huge difference, uh, honestly. Uh, and this one, another thing that I will say is uh, because uh, if when you put a suture, you could, this uh, commercial view, uh, the, the, the P3 or A3, uh, A1. Or like a P ones is a near the commercial flare or regurgitation. Is a technique is basically you either either the uh, uh, cords or the suture like this. There's mm -hmm. two way to fix. There's a very really good outcomes, but uh, the only difference that you you suture it, you restrict the, uh, uh, the leaflet's motion. So you can see the echo. You can see this is a which restricted. Yes. So in that situation, a 28 uh, leaf uh, size probably is a is a, is a better option than 30. But if you put a near codes, this is actually moves very uh, flexible, like a nature, mm -hmm. uh, native leaflets. So in that kind of situation, your 30 probably you still have a good a good captation because the leaflets motion is a, is a, is a, is a not restricted. With mm -hmm. a, with the suture is a restricted the, uh, the the leaflets and also shortened a little bit because okay. you you suture together. So that's why the either technique is very effective. But uh, you know, depend on your own practices. Uh, either way is uh, fine. But uh, me, I will choose uh, choose uh, choose a new codes because I do a majority is uh, ninety five percent above is uh, new codes mm -hmm. rather than than the suture repair. So that's I think either way is fine. Perfect result. Congratulations. Thank you. I can uh, ask a question. Yeah. Sure. So. The, this uh, this operation is very good, the good results. But maybe sometimes they can make the some uh, uh, regurgitation. Do you have some uh, standard limit uh, you, uh, during the uh, uh, during operation room? Uh, he, uh, 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 and clamping, then the echo show that uh, maybe uh, some. Uh, Residual yeah. regurgitation. Yeah. It's a, do you have some the standard limit that you will do the re, redo the repair or yeah, something? if it's more than moderate, you have to go in and then moderate. What's the standard of the moderate regurgitation? What do you the mean? Echo. I so means the. Do you have some uh, maybe the more than the uh, 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 two cm square regurgitation area, or 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 three. Uh, uh, C, uh, CM regurgitation area. Oh, do you have some? Uh, the, the no, we'll look at the, the, the vena contrata. Vena contrata. Contrata. Yeah. 3 mm. Um, how uh, how wide? Larger than 3 mm. Larger than 3 mm, then I consider to stop the heart again and then do the repair. But also, the echocardiographer will tell me where the regurgitant come from. And how can I fix it? If it's uh, damage too much, or because it's a leaflet restriction, and then maybe the second time I will not repair, but consider replacement. Yeah. So maybe uh, do you think that maybe that's regurgitation? Uh, uh, we think the maybe the early syst uh, systolic. The, uh, 
if Sorry. there is a store, if there is a store you diminished, then you don't have to do anything about it. Yeah, because uh, sometimes the contractility in the uh, when the hard rhythm happy, it's not fully contract yet. So you have the early regurgitant. But if it, after the mitral bar is closed and the regurgitation reduced, then you have to do anything about it. Yes. Okay, can I have a question? Yeah, uh, just follow the Dr. Mong's the question that uh, what is the limit they can tolerance the MR in the operation room and you need to do the redo or repair the, the mitral valve again? And you say that you depend on the parameters of uh, vena contracta. Yeah, and the uh, regurgitation volume and uh, the severity of the MR. Mm -hmm. But how about uh, one year later? I mean, it's not in the operation room, okay? The patient discharge very good and eventful, but how about one year, two years, three years later, have the same severity? Are your indication for we do the surgery the same? The, if it's the late recurrence, you just follow the guideline. I will follow the guideline, you see all the parameters. If it's uh, the LA dimensions and uh, my, uh, minimally, uh, the, the most important is the LV uh, systolic dimensions. If it's greater than 40, then you have to do, an, uh, do something about it. If the heart function ejection fraction decrease, then you have to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, mitral valve regurgitation is very well tolerated. Uh, people work very, uh, have a very good life quality, have a very well control for the mitral valve. So uh, in that words that uh, in operation room, so the indication for re uh, repair the mitral valve when he have a regurgitation and uh, after the patient discharge, we have a different, right? Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, well, I think we have to move to the the next topic. Uh, on the, the um, on this booklet, you you can see that it's a live demo, but it's a, has been changed, right? Changed to the lecture by Dr. Zhang Haipo. So Dr. Zhang Haipo is talk is going to talk a uh, topic on the Tavi valve with the uh, Enco system, that's the j valve used uh, for some challenge cases. So Dr. Zhang Hai. Uh, thank you, Professor Wei Zheng. And uh, uh, my topic this time is uh, uh, for the, the Tavi well in, in China. Actually, it's just uh, like the, the previous uh, topic about the tricapsid well. Uh, both the valves has not only the stent and the leaflet, the tissue leaflet, but also has additional, uh, there is um, a very special designed anchor system. So that's uh, different uh, uh, from other valves, the, both the, the J valve and also the uh, Lux valve. So the Z valve, uh, this one is good. So in China right now, it's uh, for the, the Tavi procedure, we, we know that by CASPID, the percentage is very high, even uh, 30 or even 40% of the Tavi procedure is uh, by CASPID. Well, and right now in, in China, there's only two kinds of uh, 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 wells is uh, available right now. It's two years ago, but still some clinical trials almost finished. So in this year, we are going to have another two uh, wells is a weta flow and uh, torrents one wells. And uh, also uh, the sipping, the wells is in clinical trial, maybe finished this year. So, and uh, during the first year after the, the Tawi uh, wells available in China is only uh, from the uh, 2017. Uh, and uh, in the first year is only about uh, 1,000 and uh, maybe two or 300 cases in the whole country. Uh, this year is uh, maybe uh, almost uh, 2,000 cases a year in, in China. So for the J-Well, this is a special design. Uh, we all know that for the Tawi wells, usually some problem. Uh, for example, the coronary artery 
uh, occlusion risk, and also sometimes the, the valve is easy for the migration, and uh, also the ha has a risk of the AV block and the uh, pacemix uh, uh, implantation and also the uh, parallel valve leak. But for the JVAL system, it, not only the stent and uh, the tissue leaflet, but also has uh, the anchor system. We call it uh, the clasper's the three uh, circle uh, ring, like is very small. And uh, for this kind of uh, design, it has some advantages of the JVAL. Uh, it can uh, use the, not only the stenosis, uh, but also for the aortic uh, regurgitation, uh, no calcium at all. And uh, because of the anchor system also has uh, uh, protect the coronary artery. So the coronary artery, uh, the risk, uh, occlusion risk is very low. And because the, the g well is the uh, position is a little bit higher and uh, the EV block, the risk is very, very low. So this is small video uh, shows, uh, right now the first version is only for the transepical one. Uh, it's easier to uh, penetrate the valve and uh, first uh, to deploy the, the anchor system and then pull down the, the valve and uh, pull the second button and uh, th the th three, the number three button, you can release, uh, deploy the valve. It's easier to, to handle. And uh, this is a step one, step two, and uh, it's step three. Uh, you can see it is very easier. It's a typical one, and uh, use the anchor system to grasp the grasp the leaflet. So uh, and uh, deploy it. And uh, there should be another video. Um, and uh, some uh, patient, if if you have patient by cuspid, it only has two sinus uh, sinus, but also the the clas the claspers can easily uh, automatically to into the the sinus. So if only two uh, claspers into two sinus is enough to uh, to settle the settle the the well. It's not easy to migrate. Okay, and uh, this one is uh, uh, you can say uh, from the coronary artery uh, the. The anchor system can uh, prevent the the leaflet closer to the coronary artery, so the, it's easier to prevent for the occlusion. And the long term, right now, is a three or four years follow up, and the, the tissue valve works very well. So in our center, uh, I could, yeah, yeah, this this picture is uh, uh, I think it's uh, more than thirteen years ago when I visited uh, Dr. Ye Jian Hospital in Vancouver. And uh, at that time, the, uh, Professor Mong uh, visited Europe for the uh, start. Uh, we started the TAVI program in our center. And uh, right now we have uh, almost 100 cases a year. And uh, some cases, it's uh, emergency cases. For this case, is a uh, uh, heart failure patient with uh, EF is only 20%. A severe calcium and uh, put the respiratory machine and also the ECMO system. And cannot cannot use the CT scanning. We use only the echo uh, to test the annulus of the valve and also the coronary, uh, the head. The head is only 62 uh, millimeters. So in the uh, hybrid uh, operation room, we use the J valve, the transepical one. We put the the type valve, and the patient is recovered very well. And uh, the next day, how uh, we. We withdraw, we take off the, the ECMO system and uh, discharge it only uh, eight days later. And there's still some other uh, cases we use for the uh, JVAL and to do the cases. So this picture shows uh, when you do the balloon size, you can see the leaflet is very high and uh, very close to the coronary artery. And uh, at, at that time, we put uh, uh, the, the wire to protect the coronary artery in case uh, in case after the deploy of the well, we use some stent uh, to save the coronary artery. But when we uh, deploy the, the J well, you can see the J well, the, the anchor system prevents the, uh, prevent the leaflet closer to the uh, coronary artery. So uh, after that, uh, for the uh, very low coronary artery, for example, the four millimeters or something like this, we do not use the well to uh, put into the coronary at, at all. 
And also we ha we have some other uh, cases use the uh, uh, JWL, uh, the David uh, procedure. And also we have some cases very large uh, annulus, because the JWL the biggest one only is the twenty nine millimeters. For example, for this case. Uh, this uh, heart failure uh, patient with uh, only uh, regurgitation, no calcium at all, and uh, renal failure cannot do the CT scanning. Uh, so uh, the the annulus is uh, uh, thirty one millimeters. The biggest valve is only twenty nine. So uh, just the preventive for the migration of the J valve, we use uh, uh, extra lex uh, the artificial cord. We all know that the aortic valve do not have uh, the the cord. So we use uh, Porting sutures uh, for zero and the three porting sutures uh, just uh, like the artificial cord uh, to just uh, fix to the uh, left ventricle apex to help the, the valve not uh, migration and the follow up is very good. So that that's how it looks like. And also some other uh, uh, hard cases, uh, for example, we combine with uh, uh, Tricipical Tawi uh, with J valve, and also we close the left appendage with the clip, uh, epicardial plate, just to prevent for the stroke uh, for this patient with the long term uh, persistence of the atrial fibrillation. And uh, we use the J valve uh, to do the valve in valve for the mitral tissue valve uh, the deterioration because right now in China the sipping is not available. We all know that. The mitral valve, well, most of the cases uh, in the world is use the sipping. Uh, this case is in this year we use the trans epical one with the J valve to do the uh, uh, valve in valve. Uh, you can see uh, from the trans epical one, it's easier to get the coaxial, and uh, after the guidance with the uh, uh, land crest, uh, uh, super stiff wire, and uh, the valve replaced very well and deploy the JWL well and 20% uh, is into the left, uh, left atrium and uh, we use uh, the claspers and uh, in the left, uh, left ventricle to prevent the, the well uh, in the future to migration from the left ventricle to the uh, atrium because there's too high pressure in the left ventricle uh, than the left atrium. So after the deploy, we do, we do the angiography and shows no uh, regurgitation at all. So the, the result is very good. And the, the mean gradient is only uh, uh, five uh, millimeters. Um, it's very good. And the 3D uh, echo shows the, the valve works very well. And uh, another case we use the j valve to do the uh, double valve disease. It's a, a mitral valve in valve and combined with uh, Aortic valve regurgitation. Uh, we use the trans way. First, we do the, the mitral valve in valve, and then uh, we use another uh, guide wire into the aorta, uh, aorta and uh, to do the uh, J valve for the aortic regurgitation. The only one uh, puncture hole in the left ap uh, apex. So the patient works very well. This is uh, the 3D. Um, this works very well, well. And for the uh, tricuspid valve, uh, valve, valve, we just mentioned for the for, uh, previous topic, is also we use uh, a J valve because we do not have the sipping again. So, and uh, this one is works very well, and uh, the long term is good. And in our center, we organize some uh, meetings uh, Professor Ye Jian, Professor Wei Zhen, Professor Yin Wei Xian. Uh, Professor uh, Liu Yongzhai, I'll visit um, our hospital for the uh, for the meeting, and uh, yeah, this this picture is uh, uh, last time uh, Professor Wei Zhong and the Professor Yi Mei visit our, our hospital, and it is uh, uh, with uh, Professor uh, Meng Xu and Professor Zhou Yujie, and also uh, for the Tavi, uh, every case we have the the follow up uh, system, uh, like the other well the pair uh, uh, cases. Before the discharge, uh, the the patient, the family family member, use the smartphone smartphone to scan the uh, the app system, and uh, uh, we have some uh, people to help uh, because the patient, if they go back to the uh, local hospital, uh, usually can uh, easy to take a photo, use the smartphone, and uh, 
uh, just uh, submit to the to the app software so we can collect uh, the echo and the uh, ecg and some other uh, information during the follow up it's a, it's a very good uh, app so in the future we have more and more uh, transcaster wild disease techniques so surgeons can do both so that's the advantages of the surgeons okay thank you thank you dr zhang uh, well, I think that JVALV is uh, quite, you know, a, a breakthrough in the, the field of TAVI. So I think it's, it's very, uh, even, you know, it's very good and it's and suitable for AR cases. So it's quite, a, you know, a good uh, news for us to know. Since, uh, even our, even we are going to, maybe uh, in the near future, we are going to have, so hopefully we, we can do the JVALV in Taiwan. So, is there any comment from Dr. Meng or, or Dr. Ye? You also have some experience with this, right? <laughs> oh, I, say, uh, I think uh, great and like all the case presentation, you, you can see this valve actually suitable for the AS uh, Mitro. And I just want to point out one thing, so you use, this is delivery system, trans-apical delivery system for the aortic valve, but actually they are smart enough can reverse the valve mounted and use for the mitral valve. That's a really smart uh, thinking because the same device you can use for the mitral group because you know the mitral group is the upside as compared to aortic valve. So usually you use a different uh, system, but this one is actually you can flip over, use the same system. Now, this is very impressive. Uh, the, 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 the mounted, uh, you know, most, uh, except the sapien valve, because there's no direction, you can do any other ways, you can do it. But for other valve, any like a, the yen valve or the, you know, core valve or the, whatever you valve use, you can not just simply reverse, use the same system. You have to use a different system to do that. So that's, a, that's I just want to point out that this, uh, this, uh, this is a very smart and, you know, thinking. Well, I think in the future, the, the cardiologist and the cardiac surgeon have to always, you know, to work together. Uh, well, that's not, uh, it is a current trend, I think. So Dr. Yin sitting here is our cardiologist. Uh, and I think some, maybe some of you are also cardiologists, right? So well, I think we have to work together at the, in the operating room. Okay, so <laughs> this is very interesting. Uh,